<laughs> man with half his face paralyzed, good old Jeffrey Woodcock. Imagine growing up with half your face totally paralyzed. Mm. That nightmare was one of New York's realities for one person. Now he had modern medicine on his side and it performed a minor miracle. For 30 years, this is what Jeffrey Woodcock saw when he looked in the mirror. Uh, okay. I'm ugly and people think that I'm ugly. He was born with half of his face completely paralyzed. Doctors aren't sure what rolling. caused it, but Jeffrey's left facial nerve just didn't work. He couldn't smile, frown, blink, or make any other facial expression that most of us take for granted. He says it was a tough way to grow Asian. up. No, I got teeth. <laughs> I, the kids were ruthless. I was just, you know, never had a date in high school and that whole thing because, you know, everyone always, you know, would make fun of me. Oh, just stand sideways. Oh, paralyzed face. Yeah. That's when I started drinking eggnog. Hey, uh, Ralph, which side's my best pro field? <laughs> <laughs> the one that moves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did laugh. Ah. Uh, Frank, he's frowning. What's wrong, Frank? You don't understand what it's like to want to smile and not be able to. <laughs> My mother was injured in a horse accident. His hoof went into her belly when she was pregnant. <laughs> Paralyzed my face muscles. Into a perpetual frown. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's tragic. I remember on my birthday, all the kids came over, and my neighbor said, "Smile, you ungrateful little cunt." <laughs> 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 All right, well, this kid. is what they're going to do for the guy. But Dr. Roger Simpson told Jeffrey there was something he could do, a specialized surgical procedure called facial reanimation. Dr. Simpson is one of a handful of surgeons in the country with years of experience doing this operation. And he offered to help Jeffrey. They're astounded to see what can be done. God is like, smile upon me, finally. He hopes to return that smile yeah, with God. both sides God of his face for the first time. You know, when I was a kid, I always looked in the mirror like, you know, what would it be like if I you know, always wanted to see what I would look like? But by Photoshop. And tomorrow fuck. I'll show you this unusual <laughs> surgery and the difference it's made in Jeffrey's appearance and his life. Oh, a tease. So we don't know yet? Don't know. Do we have the second part of that? <laughs> Imagine Should we could, care? Imagine you could finally uh, smile and then another 9-11 happens. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but he can't do anything no but smile. <laughs> so no matter what kind of news he hears, he has to smile. <laughs> yeah. Smile. That's horrible. That's <laughs> terrible. I'm sorry. Your grandmother died. Big dopey smile. I can't. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're at the funeral. <laughs> smile. Yeah, smiling like the Joker. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got a great story to get to here. Listen to this one. A boy from Florida with cancer is very much <laughs> That wasn't the funny part, Jimmy. Jimmy! <laughs> Cancer's not funny. <laughs> A boy from Florida with cancer is very much easy. Jimmy. What? <laughs> hmm. No. A boy from Florida... My health doesn't allow it. <laughs> <laughs> I see where this is going. I, 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 I actually, I'm going to probably feel guilty soon because I don't. Just, let me hear how old he is first. Yeah. A boy from Florida with cancer is very much using his head. Pat Pedraja lost all of his hair following chemotherapy, so the very inventive 11-year-old decided to uh, offer up advertising space on his head on eBay for five thousand bucks. You can lease space on a quarter of his head for three months. Five G's. It will not only help you by advertisement; it also helps save a bunch of lives. You see, all of the money Pat raises will go to the bone marrow banks to help leukemia patients just like him. Talk about a great kid. Hopefully you can help him out. All right, get this kid on the phone. Wow logo on his head. You want a wow logo, five grand? And Opie and Anthony, wow logo on his head. Where does it go, though? Does he just stay at home? Yeah. No, who sees he's him? <laughs> he's gonna yeah. stay. How much what are you are you taking? Come on. $5,000 worth of advertising so some fat nurse can look at your head? <laughs> yeah. Get out in the mall, sick boy. Yeah. You want to ball games? <laughs> yeah. We don't yeah. need to advertise to <laughs> grandma. <laughs> She's bringing you your soup. Exactly. <sighs> That's <sighs> great. Who's going to see a wow sticker? A mortician. <laughs> Oh, oh. <laughs> get him drunk oh, on the hey, oh, sorry, hey. hey whoa, know. is that over the line? You He's know. Not dead. <laughs> I'm not the one putting ads on the kid's head. It's probably his father who needs money to gamble. <laughs> <laughs> he already did, and he lost. Uh. <laughs> uh.
Uh, it's great. I love how Jimmy turned around. On, yeah, guys, scare you all. That's what he does on stage. Yeah. You just got a bunch of oohs and reacted just like you do on stage. What, what do you think's going to happen to the kid? He's got leukemia. He's selling ad space on his skull. How do I react? How adorable? A little punk. To smack his face. Straighten him out. That, can you imagine the guy that puts the ad on his head the day before he passes and he tries Aww. to get his money back? <laughs> you know, I, had a, I was supposed to get a three-month run on this. Contractually, there has to be a stipulation. Look, yeah. if he falls down before February 8th, I get half my money back. <laughs> I bet he could get more money if he had some sort of a contest. See if you can come up with more money to keep them from putting advertisements on his head. My poor son, we're going to have to write on his head. Yeah, look, we got to write on this poor so kid's poor. head because we're poor. Yeah, we need money for him. He's sick. Ten grand yeah. can keep his head clean. Usually if people just go on the news like this, they get money. Yeah. 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 Like, I, I was a sucker for that no goddamn idea. stupid little pudding head girl that got her wheelchair stolen. Oh, that's right. You don't Remember that it. one? I felt so bad. I went home, and I, I found out the address to send money to, Wait, and I was sent the, money. What was the story again? Oh, little pudding head girl. <laughs> she, uh, <laughs> pudding, uh, she uh, was in a wheelchair. You know, she was wheelchair bound. I think she had a brain tumor. That's what it was. And she had a special van that was yeah, stolen? Yeah, a special van, and the wheelchair was in it, and everything got stolen. So why didn't you buy her the van? And they needed money. I didn't, <laughs> how do you know I didn't? Did you? I, I, I cut him a nice check. Put it that way. Oh, that's great. And I, let me tell you something. I never heard word one back. Really? They didn't even thank you? I got nothing back. Not only did I not send anything... But I wrote a letter that said, ha ha. <laughs> That's what you get. Show off. <laughs> That's what you get. Show off. Show off. That's for having what you stuff get. Going. That's what you get. <laughs> Miss, it's all about me. <laughs> and it has a special van in the bed that comes up. They didn't give you a letter back in? Uh, no. No. I know but your but information I, was I, I didn't. Hefty. What about you know, the joy in your heart? That's what it's all about. Yeah. Really? It's just about, you know, doing something nice for somebody. Yeah, I wasn't so looking for anything. I'm going to let it back from the parents. Hey, yeah. thank you. I wasn't looking for that. Well, I would have been. I, I kind of expected it, but I wasn't looking. Please repossess the van. Please sue them <laughs> to get the van back. Yeah. <laughs> it's tangled them up in court for years. <laughs> they it's can't so funny drive when, it. when people get charity and then they don't respond to it the right way and everybody yeah. freaks out, like that family in New Orleans. Yep, yep. You know, that $75,000 house. $75,000 house. Which is well, amazing that you can get a house for seventy five grand. by the way. 75 G's. And it was, it was like a nice house. It was like yeah, a real nice bad. house. Over here, it would be like a crap hole. Yeah. It would be garbage. But there, it was really nice. And uh, the church gave it to this family uh, because they were homeless because of Katrina. And they turned around and immediately sold it Never for a profit. In. Never yeah, moved in. Like <laughs> took the money and ran. And then I think what, what was bad was their little interview they had on the news. Because, uh, the, of course, one of those shame, shame, shame on you reporters ran after them. Yeah. And was asking the wife uh, what happened, and she explained it. It's just they didn't come off looking. The like husband it. was the best. The Take husband was the best. Take it up with God. Take it up with God. Actually, guys, we got the story. It's, oh, you got it's it. So weird that Joe nice. went there. Thank you, Joe. Oh, this one was great. I watched this uh, like three times because I is, couldn't believe the husband was, was this stupid. Yeah, listen to this. We've been telling you about a New Orleans family displaced by Hurricane Katrina. In February, the Temple of Deliverance Church of God in Christ gave them the keys to a house in Hickory Hill that church members say the wife selected, a $75,000 house free and clear. But we discovered the family sold it without ever moving in. This is dying through. Dolores Thompson and her family were selected out of more than 50 Hurricane Katrina families My house. to be the recipients of this $75,000 house. So why did they never move in? And why did they sell it? When we called Thompson, she admitted she had not moved in, but told us she still owned the house. She hung up when asked if she had sold it. Mm -hmm. Bravo, man. They need the money. Bravo. Yes, They bravo. need the money. These two were... were a characters, shysters. I wonder how they picked them because I mean, how many people lost their house? Yeah. I know. Yeah, what was away? the criteria? Probably a, uh, being a scumbag, a raffle or something, or some kind of drawing. I, I think they really? a couple. They probably said they had a, a story or something like that, and they were trying to get married or something. I, I don't know. Something. Take it up with God. That's what the guy kept saying. Yeah, we interviewing him. Take it up with God. Yeah, he just wanted uh, airtime too. Yeah. Like he was all happy smiles. Like, let me talk. I want to be on a camera. He was a fairly smooth character. Oh, he was smooth. Agreed to meet us at the house. 
When they arrived, she told us death in her family and personal problems kept her from moving in. I was in need of a house, but at the time that I was in need of a house, I didn't get the house. And so once I got the house, I, I, I really don't like this area. I really didn't. <laughs> and I didn't know anybody, so that's why I, I didn't move in and I sold it. She eventually told us she made $60,000 off the sale. But that's not what the deed shows. Well, according to this document that I have, you sold the house for $88,000, which means you made No, a I didn't profit. sell it for 88000 I sold it for sixty. The people who sold it got the rest of the money. Some commission. Wow. Who the hell's getting uh, the, the difference from on six, yeah, 60? On 60. Uh, I don't think so. Maybe they're just not, I mean, not that she doesn't sound like the most financially yeah. you know, savvy woman. I like how she starts off saying, like, well, at the time I did need it, and then when I yeah. got it, well, I didn't need it anymore. I didn't, need it anymore. I didn't move it. I didn't, I didn't know anybody there. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the, the bottom line on this whole thing is there is probably a family that really needed the house that would have moved in and loved it. Yeah, loved having that house. Loved you know, it. you know where the happy people are? The neighbors. Yeah. <laughs> I saw the neighborhood. Yeah, the neighbors bought the house. They were nailing together some crosses that's in why, that neighborhood. That's why she sold it for sixty. Because yeah. as soon as she moved in, it was worth fifteen thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> hey, here's the clip Joe Rogan was talking about. The husband wants to be on camera. Yeah. Listen to this. Make it up so you can give me two. I want to be on camera. I want to be on camera, too. Oh, the husband boss. Now, ask me a question. <laughs> The way it appears is that a house, a church. The way, church? It, appears, the way it appears, I'll take it over here. There's a lot of chicanery, conniving, deceit, deception, divisiveness, trickery going oh, that's on. Awesome. On whose part? Because the church gave oh, yeah. you first a free part. house. The church the gave you part. a free house, no, and you all never moved in. Anything. That was church people who, out of the, their generosity, paid okay, for this take house. Take it up with God. Take it up with God. <laughs> uh, it's the, you gotta love that kind of chicanery. arrogance. I love that too. Chicanery, 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 chicanery. The guy says, "Who on wow, whose part?" Wow. He goes, "The church." That's oh, the church that gave you a free house? Yeah. That dude is right out of pimps up, hose down. Oh man. yeah. yeah. <laughs> he ain't <laughs> telling me nothing, Street bitch. Corner, you know, street corner. <laughs> yes. Slim. You gotta make your next move the right move. Choose a pimp tonight, baby. Chicanery, divisiveness, divisiveness, divisiveness. divisiveness. chicanery. That's he brilliant. Was, he was standing there with a big brim and a cane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A crunk cup. Take it up with God. It turned out Jesus. Take All right. it up with God. Take it up with God. Here's how the story ends. We took it up with God. <laughs> God had no comment, <laughs> and God said, "Better there than in my neighborhood." <laughs> Back to you, Chip. The interview ended with the Thompsons speeding away. I don't like the area. You don't like the area, but I don't understand. Dolores, the IT on public records showing the family previously had a New Orleans address. And while the church never told them they couldn't sell the house, they say they would have never given it to them had they known they were not going to move in. If you are not the most needed, you should decline. You know, there are monies that have been given, churches have been given, there are houses, and there's still people out, out there without houses, and they have it. It's a hardship on them. Don't accept the gift if you don't need it. If you don't need it. We took it up with God, and he said, I quote, next time I'll drown all the... <laughs> how, how can you speed away on a bus? <laughs> Take it up with God. They sped away in a car donated to them by a white man with his head cracked open on the curb. Yeah. They sped away in a van with a wheelchair in it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's pretty clever. Uh, callback. I like the callback. Uh, let's go to Steve on Long Island. Steve, what's up? Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, Steve. Yeah, you know what they should advertise on that that ca that kid's head? Oh, yeah. Well, at least I don't have AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> and he gives a francus. Hey, when that kid, when you're advertising his head, does his father say, "Hey, look, if we don't give him the medication, will his head swell up so we can put some more advertisements?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, he has the money pours in. They try to give him medicine. It just makes his head real big. <laughs> well, they they do what those them. crazy dudes do to their, their testicles, where they inflate them with saline. Right, right. Oh, yeah, 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 get them just pump them up. 
<laughs> and they just like feeding him radiation so hair doesn't cover up the head space. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's the kid. There's a picture That's of the kid. That's him. Look at him. Oh, God. Oh, wow. Oh, look, if you... Tussle his little scalp. <laughs> yeah. The little sign says, if you lived here, you'd be home right now. <laughs> so, for five grand. There's a bullseye in the back oh, of his head. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> for five oh. grand, you could put anything on his head. I'm um, seeing limits. What are you yeah. going to sue him? Whackback.com. Yeah, I think Probably. we should buy some space. I think yeah. that if we're not on the phone, we should buy his whole head. How many spaces <laughs> do you have for rent? And Opie and Anthony should buy his whole head. Does he have a contact? Let's talk to this kid. Let's see what we could get on his head. <laughs> why not? Yeah, well, why absolutely. not? Absolutely. I guess the most lucrative uh, part of his head would be the front. That yeah. way, at least yeah. friends and family will see it if the worst happens. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. he's laying backwards. Yeah. And again, if it's on the back, what do you need? One uncle seeing your head? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Imagine if Rocky Dennis had that disease, they would have been millionaires. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, tattoo on the back, silk pillow here. <laughs> uh, All right. Well, speaking of uh, kitty oh. porn. Nice segue. A uh, teacher is charged with uh, possession of child porn. FBI agents serving a search warrant last summer at the... Last summer? And this is just coming out? At uh, this home in uh, blah, 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 uh, this middle school teacher was heard hammering. This doesn't make sense. All right. FBI agents serving a search warrant last summer at a home of a middle school teacher. Okay. Heard hammering sounds from inside and forced their way in, according to a court document. Uh, inside, they found the teacher standing naked outside his bedroom. Oh, no. The agents found a laptop computer smashed into pieces in the bedroom with a hammer on the keyboard. The teacher, Eric Blah Blah, 48, told them he smashed the computer because he was afraid they would discover illegal music files. There you go. Music. <laughs> uh, what they found in his home led the teacher to take a leave from middle, uh, the middle school, and he went before a judge in San Diego federal court yesterday on charges of possession of child pornography. -da! Wow. What did he hear, like, warrant or something, and uh, the busting the door down? Yeah. And he, he knew exactly he was, what they were coming for. And he was nude, so he didn't even have time to get pants no. on. He was downloading at that moment. He was downloading yeah, at that know. moment. He was able to find the, the hammer, what he thought was in time, and he just started smashing the laptop to pieces naked as the FBI the FBI agents uh, busted through the that front must door. must have been his plan if he had a hammer right nearby. What a dumb plan. How about this? Why don't you just fill the, put the, some water in the tub and throw it in that? What's going to ruin a hard drive faster than a tub full of water? I don't know. I don't... Uh, those things are sealed up pretty good. Yeah, are they? it's yeah. like a black box there, Jimmy. Yeah, they you could, they could get at it. You gotta like drill holes in the hard drive and then run it over some kind of super magnet. It's over. They uh, got you. The laptop was so damaged that its hard drive could not be fully accessed, but investigators could tell that it had 519 movie files and 362 pictures on it, many with names describing child pornography. Oh. Uh, Baby so bird. <laughs> he had, uh, another computer in the house had 3,500 images wow. and 60 movies involving children and, you know, the, the whatever. Uh, hundreds of additional photos and movies were found on recordable compact discs in the home. Wow, this guy was obsessed. Jesus, what a, what a naughty boy. Burning him to disc. There you go. Yeah, no, he's starting his own online distribution service. <laughs> <laughs> he's busy. He's got a DVD burner. He's trying to write it off. That's my new business venture. <laughs> Good uh, luck to you. What a creep. And then this... Uh, he'll, do, he'll do fine in prison. Yeah. You know, kid. They don't really mind that whole thing in prison. That's what you when want the cops to see. you're a 48-year-old guy. <laughs> so, kid toucher. He's done. You're naked with a hammer and a smashed kitty porn laptop. <laughs> that looks good in court. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Godspeed. We're ready to go here. Okay, man accidentally downloads kitty porn 11 times. Whoops. So, continuing with the same subject here, listen to this. A Winter Springs man was arrested for having child pornography on his computer. But he told us it's all a big misunderstanding. Yeah. And now, neighbors don't know what to think. Channel 9's Cynthia Demas sat down and spoke with the man on Highlands Glen Circle. Jack Nation lives in this Winter Springs home right here, and he tells us he's on his computer all the time. He told us that some unsolicited child porn pictures were emailed to him, and he invited us into his house to talk about it. People actually sent me pictures, too. Creep. Unsolicited. And I guess they were on the computer. Once it goes on there, it's on there, I guess. I don't know that much about it. I know that guy's on ah, my mailing list. <laughs> there he goes. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know. Have you ever been sent unsolicited child porn? 
once I was in a, um, a chat room where they were sending stuff around. It was like something very questionable, but nothing. You just got to open it. I didn't know what it was. You got to like download. Why Picture. would you download anything someone sends you? It was years ago, when I first started going to AOL. When's the last time I was in an AOL chat? Oh, room? oh years ago? Uh, eight years, nine years ago. Well, uh, that's when it was the wild, wild west. Yeah. Half the time, you didn't know what people were sending. People like, would go on these download anything. People would go on these picture things where they would go, list me, list me, list me. And I didn't know what it was. I just knew everybody was putting it, so I put list me. And they would send out porn pictures, all kinds of stuff. And, uh, you know, once in a while, you get something questionable. But nothing blatant or flagrant. Yeah. Like stuff you're like, ah. Eh. Nowadays, you, you, why would you even open something like that, an attachment, yeah. unless you know somebody? Right. Just asking for at least a virus. Well, here's the clip where he claims he accident accidentally downloaded the uh, illegal porn 11 times. Oh, whoops a daisy. When we asked 69-year-old Jack Nation about charges of kiddie porn on his computer, he claimed he didn't realize what he was opening before it was too late. I'm basically just a nice person, and I didn't do anything intentional to bring shame on myself, my family, my friends, or anybody else. Yeah. Though he said it wasn't intentional, there are 11 charges against him, alleging he opened 11 different pictures. The Florida Department of Law Enforcement's Computer Crime Center cracked this case. They said they went to a chat room that no longer exists called Petite Picture Traders. Oh. They were able to trace the people in the chat room. They said Nation was one of them. That gave authorities probable cause to confiscate his computer. And that's when they said they found the images. Yeah. I was looking for pictures of the woman from Poltergeist. I swear. <laughs> I didn't know what the room was about. Petite Picture Trader. What could Stop. that be? Stop. Know That's what that is? Neighbors who didn't want to be identified said they're concerned. Who knows what's going on behind closed doors? Something what's going hot. on in his computer room, Nation claims, <laughs> is just confusion. Well, actually, I feel like it's a bad misunderstanding, and I have an attorney. I'm, I'm sure that it's uh, are going to be cleared up, and I hope soon. Nation is out on a $55,000 bond. We did run his record. He has no prior convictions. <laughs> we ran his record. There you go. What do you think? Ah, uh, guilty. Yeah. Probably, but 11 pictures, that's, you know. 11 times? Well, there's a lot more people you can go after than 11, a guy with 11 photos on his laptop. Got to, got to start somewhere. Nah, but go after the guys who are selling it. And Gary Glitter probably had 11 on there at some point. In one attachment, he got 11. <laughs> Let's say hi. I want to see if this works. The phone's down here. Let's oh, say boy. hi to Talon, the trucker. Talon, what's up? Hey, I can hear you. I used to share a computer with a roommate of mine, and... He was a photographer, did uh, porno photos and stuff, but he also downloaded a lot of stuff from news groups. And there's a couple of programs that would just download all the photos from various news groups, no matter what was in there. Straight, weird shit, uh, kitty porn, whatever. Next thing you know, you have tons of stuff on your computer. And it's like, oh, shit, do I really want to be connected with this? Hope you, got, uh, hope you can hear Wait. me. I ain't hearing shit back. Uh, oh, my God. Well, love that... That, love went, that, word. Uh, that went great. Guy couldn't hear us, and then he decides he can't hear us, so he has to curse because he can't hear us. Three times. Three times. Same word, too. But, Jesus. But Mix basically, it up a little. It sounds like he shared a computer with a roommate, and uh, I don't know. And the, the roommate downloaded some stuff accidentally, and now it's on uh, the, the computer they share. I don't want to share a computer. Oof. Get in trouble. My goodness. What's the ruling on that, Kenny? Get in trouble, right? Oh, yeah. 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 Thanks. They'll take both of you in. <laughs> well, thanks for uh, adding to the story, Kenny. They'll, yeah, they'll take terrific. both of you in. Old people still do it. Of course they do. Yeah. We just don't know. We just don't want to hear about it, right? How many yeah. old people are really doing it? Dude, the Viagra. Yeah, but they had uh, the stories come out where they gotta have uh, women that are uh, uh, willing and able. Well, that's the problem. The women have been coming out of the woodwork uh, going, oh, my God, I, I curse Viagra because my Stop life was it. fine. I, I spent many, many years having sex with my husband, and it was great, and we had kids. We had a great, healthy sex life. But then, you know, you get older, and you, you kind of fade into some other stuff with your relationship. And then they, they invent this Viagra, and then the guys are back at it with them, and they're just not into it anymore. Well, you fade into other stuff like what, cancer? Good for these old guys. Make, make them make they, let, let your, your your golden years be filled with humiliating her like you did through your younger years. <laughs> old codgers. Exactly. That just reminds me of those uh, HBO shows again. Wow. You know, whenever they do that real, uh, sex. real sex on HBO. Do they still do real sex, by the way? I don't know if they're still doing it or just rerunning old ones, but 
they, they seem like they're all the same. Yeah. They have the one with the the elderly, you know. Like they they go to a place because they're always they always have to go to someone's house that seems to be the know it all. Some hippie, some freak. old yeah hippie broad, and the old people go there and it's to like rekindle their love life because uh, their sex uh, life has uh, gone down the tubes over the years, and they go there and and they're all together in one room laying on a floor, and the woman the know it all hippie broad is telling them what to do. Now, and they're naked. They're all just nude, looking just like awful, like like material hanging off the end of a table, <laughs> like doilies. <laughs> their bodies, and uh, they're like rubbing each other. Now, give your husband the a back rub, uh. and just these translucent veiny hands rubbing this back with skin tags all over it is just n not. Sexy. She's the sex coach, right? Yeah, she's the sex coach. Uh, coach, and and then they show you know them getting into areas that are a little more sensitive than just their back, and and that's when the grandpa's laying there and he goes like, oh, <laughs> oh, and you just hear this room of grandpas moaning, and these old broads putting their hands where they haven't been in years. <laughs> Oh, that's oh, it. Very Mildred. good. Very good, Myrtle. Oh. Myrtle, you're doing a fine job. Oh. She got the grandchildren's charm bracelet dangling. <laughs> yeah. Eight grandchildren tinkling away. Tinkle, tinkle, tinkle. Clink, 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 clink. Oh, they're, they're going to have to be washed because one slipped and kind of hey, went somewhere. Why do you have one black stinky? grandchild half again? <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, we should get it. those this. shows. Watch them every time. They, they highlight a couple little uh, sentences, but this thing is worth reading from the beginning. Uh, they're looking for love and learning some harsh lessons. Oh. The truth about elderly sex and the consequences. Elderly slam. On November 30th, 2006. At the Pinhole? Pinhole? It looks like Pinhole, but it's uh, at the Pinhole Senior Center in Northern California. There are lots of gray-haired folks huddled around the computer these days. Uh-oh. What, what are they doing? Oh, no. Contrary to expectations, they're not there to learn how to email their more tech-savvy grandchildren. Mm -hmm. No, these grandmas and grandpas are looking for love on the Internet. <laughs> How about they have some dignity and just go online and search for burial plots? <laughs> Work out the inheritance and move on. Selfish. Betty Pluck. Or, or Pleak. Pluck. I don't know. You pronounce it. P-L-E-I-C-H. Betty Pleak. Pluck. Betty Luck. Betty Luck. Betty. A 75-year-old widow is open to the possibilities of internet dating. But she was hot when she was nose art on a bomber. <laughs> <laughs> Enough with Betty. She says she couldn't uh, imagine her grandmother searching the web for a bow, but this generation is different. Bow. I think we want to get out and go, Pleach says. We don't want to sit back in the rocking chair. We want to spread our wings still at this age. Yeah, yeah. and those are wings with gravity. <laughs> Look. Old dusty wings. <laughs> And she's, you know, I'd always heard that colored gentlemen were built a certain way. And I, I joined this website, and they certainly are. It was all so forbidden back then. Now, I'm open to anything. Yeah, one in the front. One... <laughs> Two, each hand. <laughs> you can be a five-holer. Just a disgusting whore of a granny. Hey, whatever happened to our old stripper friend? Um, wasn't she in her seventies and still stripping? And we got her to do it uh, in front of us, uh, in front of a live audience a few times. What was her name Which again? What was that? Came? Not Sandy. There was another one. Not the piano that, player that held up for uh, for her no. age anyway. Uh, Remember she would she had like really nice boobs for a seventy something year old, and I don't even think they were uh, implants. I can't remember. I'm sure Steve still has the uh, the the videos up on uh, foundrymusic.com somewhere. Sandy actually held up for her age if she's six hundred. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, well, uh, <clears throat> and I was waiting to get that, that one out. Yeah, well, uh, uh, <laughs> that, wow. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> that was... <laughs> That was. You yeah, might want to go back into the bathroom and see if you could plunge up your sense of humor. <laughs> that was. Nothing? Hey, Jeez, I thought that was. 
If she's 600. Okay, terrific. Yeah, well, hey. (laughs) Kenny's hair actually blew by after that joke. (laughs) All right. He recovers. Of course I do. I hope it rains out of a ditch. I hope it rains on that stupid head of his so we can see that afro. I know he has an afro. Of course he does. When you add water to that hair, it just goes boom. I know. He's not a cop anymore. He's starring in Cooley High. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Lawrence Hilton Jacobs. <laughs> hey, you want to go on with this here? Yeah. Love lessons. Okay. Oh, yeah. The online dating class is taught by Connie Acton and her boyfriend of eight years, Tom Bowie. Connie is 74. Tom is 70. Nice. They met when he attended her basic computer class. Ew. I remember when I was a kid and I looked at my mother. She remarried when she was 49, and I thought, what for? You're 49. You're almost dead. Now I'm looking at her and thinking she was a kid almost at 49. With their full active and busy lives, today's older adults want a partner to share it with. Active and busy? Yeah. So busy about being a burden. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm busy walking in a circle and calling people who'd rather not hear from me because I'm a reminder of their mortality. Hey, hey, hey. They're saying they're saying 70 is the new 40. Yeah, yeah sure is it, it is. really? Yeah, they, they're saying that, Jimmy. Good. Then I can't wait to see these 40-year-olds in coffins because I'm tired of them. Busy. The slow driving. Uh, <laughs> Putting flat spots on tennis balls on their walkers. <laughs> That's what they're busy seniors. doing. That also means having a robust sex life well into their 70s, 80s, and even 90s. No way. Stop it. You want to have a sex life? Check yourself into a home and then lay face down while the orderly makes his rounds at (laughs) 2 in the morning. (laughs) How's that? Guy that looks like Bubba Smith will tear off your awful jammies and straighten you out better than your husband ever did. You think? It, oh God! You think in some of those situations the the old broad goes, ah, what the hell? What the hell? Of course she does. What am I gonna do anyway? Gonna Fight feed, him off? Feed tube in her mouth? <laughs> ah, let's see. Uh, okay, it also means confronting a harsh reality of the modern world: sexually transmitted diseases. Stop it already! Grandma's Just getting the stop. Clap. There are barely. Any diseases going on with the old people as far as the screwing goes? Yeah, when you get everything uh, dried up, you know. Unless they're transmitting osteoporosis <laughs> through their uh, wear a, seed. Wear a condom. I don't want to get Alzheimer's. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have unprotected sex. Next thing you know, you're forgetting everybody's name. <laughs> Here we go. Safe sex after 60. I see older people who think sexually transmitted diseases are for the young. Says Dr. Blah, 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 assistant blah, 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 at blah, 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 blah. Here blah, comes blah. A, a stat. Uh, we don't get gonorrhea. We don't get chlamydia. We don't get HIV, her patients tell her. However, Dr. Blah, blah, blah says that's a fallacy. Patients often are too shy to ask their doctors difficult sexual questions. So doctors need to ask them directly, she says. I say, how is your sex life? And then wait for the answer. And that uh, normalizes and makes it much easier for an older woman to say, well, there's some issues that I want to talk to you about. Oh. Every time I sit on a seat, the cushion comes up with me. Is that unhealthy? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Dr. Blunt, she has this book, um, What Your Mother Never Told You About Sex. It's blunt about asking her patients if they're practicing safe sex. Uh, It could save their lives. But you're 70, you're 80, you're 90. Age isn't going to waste his time on you if you're 85 years old. (laughs) Age would have mercy for you. Would just show up and sit there? (laughs) Ah, Baker and Carrier. I love this. Stats uh, show that although the highest number of new HIV cases is people in their 30s and 40s, there are now more patients being diagnosed in their 50s than in their 20s. Well, of course, there's a little more education with people in their uh, 20s. And people in their 50s are in that prime st- age where they were banging unprotected uh, uh, when, when you know, it was really going on. Back in the 70s, old disco thing, little snort, some unprotected sex, Studio 54. 70s? Those people aren't yeah. that old yet. Let me think. They're, they're, if they, if were, they were in their 20s in the yeah, 70s? they're in their mid-50s? Yeah, then they're in their 50s. That's what he's, they're saying. Oh, okay. More people being diagnosed in their 50s oh, I'm sorry. than mis- in their uh, I 20s. I you there, Ian. I'm sorry about that. I was thinking more speakeasy time for yeah. some of these people. Uh, so once they're practicing safe sex, Dr. Hutcherson says it's time to make sure they're having enjoyable sex. Yeah. Sex, sex is. is lifelong, she says. You can never give up on something that is so important. 
That surprises many old people who've been led to believe their sex drive lessens or dies out later in life. It surprised Joan Price so much when she fell in love at age 57 that she was moved to write a book. It's titled uh, Better Than I've Ever Expected, Straight Talk About Sex After 60. Can I say the one line back here that you, you jumped over this paragraph and it just, it just, it just creeps me out? Yeah, again. The book has gone to a second printing and also led to a blog in which middle-aged and older men and women write uh, for some straight sex talk everything from when is too soon to become intimate with a new man after a spouse dies to reclaiming sexuality after cancer. Wow, that is hot stuff. What Our, fun reading that must be. Well, Oof. why don't we have that reading in front of us? Yeah. I would love to Why know. don't we have that reading in front of us? Let's try to find that blog. And to answer the question, how long do you become intimate after a spouse dies? I say an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I say while you're still crying and wailing on his chest in the hospital, an orderly should come up behind you. <laughs> That's right. Back to the orderly jokes. <laughs> we never leave them. We only place them aside for a second. <laughs> oh, I can't believe it, Irving. Uh, what are you doing, sir? Now 63, Joan is a newlywed. She met her husband Robert when he took her line dancing. Uh, took her line dancing class. That does. Yeah. When he took her to a line dancing class. The sex? Well, she's happy to report that it's never been better. Ne at 63, never been. Her better. sex has never been better. A liar. She has had an awful life of of what rape everywhere she goes. <laughs> like everything was just a rape. Well, once my husband Attila died. <laughs> yeah. What the hell? At 63, better than ever. Stop it. I had expected as a young person that old people, A, didn't have sex. B, if they did, they didn't enjoy it because it was something that young people did, she says. And then when I fell in love at age 57, I was amazed at how wonderful it was, not only being in love, but also our sex life. Oh, I hope her husband's one of those guys that bilk old broads for their money. Yeah. <laughs> Chris just Carmine. leaves one day. Hey, did you just say, ich? Yeah. That's how this... No, he said bilk. Well, the, yeah. uh, you went, ugh. Yeah, well, I, I asked that, Jimmy, because that's how the article ends. Oh. If anyone out there is saying, ugh, about older people having sex lives, uh, Joan Price says, just wait. And Dr. Hutcherson admonishes people to never give up on love and sex. It should never, never be something you just lock in a closet and say, those days are over. We got to find that block. Never, huh? Do you, do, do you see some of these people walking around with the walkers? And on in, on the little rascals, <laughs> you think those people can't just say never and forget about it and think of it as a thing of the past? Granny walking around with a four prong cane, <laughs> those orange bright tennis balls on that that walker, the new walker with the handbrakes, <laughs> so Granny don't go rolling down the hill. Hey, the walkers help though. Yeah, she but can lean forward. No. <laughs> oh, oh, you're thinking for a sexual. She's ready, uh, she's ready for doggy. Uh, anywhere oh, she goes. Nice. Anywhere you and, she goes. You and your eight friends get behind her. Could I have a package of condoms? <laughs> and I need some KY and 14 tennis balls. We're really gonna wear them out tonight. <laughs> Just sliding on the linoleum. Yeah. Let's go to Josh in Florida. Oh. Josh. <laughs> oh, morning, her morning, mangy sorry, poodle watching the whole thing. Day. Hold on, Josh. Hey, go ahead, Josh. Yeah, that's all right, Josh. Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to let you guys know the uh, you guys were talking about how old people don't get sexually transmitted diseases. There was an outbreak of, I think it was chlamydia, at a retirement town called the Villages a couple months back. The Villages. The really? Well, yeah. we got to find that now too. I got to I got to learn about this. Here's the uh, the stat I love is Thank the one you, that sir. says uh, you know the elderly are the fastest growing um, population getting HIV. Yeah. And it's like okay, let's look at the stats, and they say well it's you know up a hundred percent from uh, last year, and then you look and realize. One had it last year. Now, this two year, have it. two have it. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> like, that's why stats stink. Stats are ridiculous. If you go inside the stats a little and just uh, look around, yeah. you realize how ridiculous Take stats a are. Peak. When you're yeah. in your 70s, if you have chlamydia, all you got to do is cough and it falls out. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Findings are being reported by the Times of India in an article called "Indian Men Don't Measure Up." Poor fit contributes to a higher failure rate, which experts say is a major problem in India. The number of HIV infu infections has been <laughs> skyrocketing oh. there. The government study measured 1,400 men and found most... Are they, were they talking about their dicks don't fit in the fucking condoms or something? 
Like the story alone is pretty, pretty hot. Is that what? If they don't measure up, and they're co- they're falling out of their condoms. Is that what he's And said? getting AIDS or something. Jesus. There's some type of they infection. They got big cocks. <clears throat> oh, it, or small cocks. Oh, they got small cocks. I couldn't tell. Why are you Indian? Never seen an Indian How man. How do you know cock. all about this? Look at those lips. What? When you're sucking on, what? Wait. Oh, oh, this kid uh, sucks on cocks. Come on in. Who are you, sir? Uh, my name is Franco from Oceanside. Franco from Oceanside. So how do you know about Indian cocks? Take a seat. Uh, the article was on whackbag.com. Oh, it was? Oh, yes. Okay, of course it was. Cool. Thank Your you Indian know. cock <laughs> website. Yes. <laughs> Your Indian cock connection. <laughs> and uh, it's that Indian man's cocks too small? Yeah, they don't they don't fit in even regular size condoms. Regular size condoms, so they should <laughs> fucking st- holy shit. Rot little dicks falling <laughs> out. Dibber dabber dib. <laughs> oh, that is the worst. You know that's worse. a bad rep. Don't they have extra skin to begin with, so they got more to stuff in there? Or skin? I don't know. I've never seen an Indian no? man's cock. Anyone? Oh, where's Steve? Well, the, it depends on where they're from. <laughs> it depends on the region, what part of the country. Yes. If you're speaking a different dialect, yes. The Hindus are, are, are thicker endowed. Steve, there he is. Steve, you know anything about Indian, Indian men's cocks? Do they have foreskin? Uh, I went to boarding school with an Indian guy once. Oh, oh. and yeah, a lot of foreskin on the Indian. Oh, because the, uh, their their religion, Buddhism, doesn't uh, uh, ha- have circumcision in it as some kind of. Uh, is that what it is? I don't know. I just remember this kid had a lot I'm of foreskin. Babbling in front of a microphone. Penis? No, kind of average, but it's just a lot. Did you ever of... grab it and twist his foreskin and then snap it up like a window shade? That laugh and lick it. I mean, I'm just asking. <laughs> it's very tempting to do a few times because the story itself. Well, I thought it was the story, and yeah. then I realized it was that he, it was a blooper, and the guy said infuction. Infuction, right. Which was always a favorite as a kid. Right. I can't hear you. I have an infuction in my ear. We were watching porn the other night, and, you know, the size of the cocks and this and that, and Ooh. this guy comes out with a cock. And comes and out bon- with a cock. And Bonnie goes, look how small that is, and it was fucking way bigger than mine. I'm going, why would you say that? Yeah. You know, I don't mind if she says, well, you're look not how in big porno. It's a, it doesn't. It doesn't matter if she says it to a porno movie. It's like look how small that guy is to a porn movie. It's oh. like if you're driving and you know you're watching a NASCAR thing. He goes, look how fast he's driving. It's NASCAR. It doesn't mean you're driving slow. To oh. put it in terms you can understand. Thank you. Yeah. Here's Always the story. here to help. Measuring up. Sorry, folks. We don't know how to quite tell you this, but a two-year study by the Indian Council of Medical Research has conclusively established that the penises of Indian men are smaller, one to two inches smaller wow. in point of fact. That is small considering the average penis lays somewhere between five and a half and six inches. No, between three and a half and four and a half. Is that what if you If it's under Bonnie? ice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what he tells Bonnie. Right. Oh. Look, it's average. Yeah. Uh, average. So they're talking, um, wow, that's a small dick, you Indians. No one is so crotchety. <laughs> Calibrated penises of the 1,200 volunteers across the country uh, down to the last millimeter concluded that Indian men came up short of the international standard. Oh. How did the uh, Chinese fit into this? Because that's always the stereotype there. Why, uh, is the council peeking into your pants, you ask? Well, their concern is condoms, a fifth of which fall off or tear during use by Indian men because they're too large. The condom, that is. The international condom standard are not appropriate for Indians. So the ICMR is calling for mixed-size condoms, euphemism for smaller, mixed size. The council fears that people would be too embarrassed to ask the pharmacist for a smaller condom, of course. Minis. Say, can I have the Indian mini? <laughs> Sunil Mahra, former editor of Maxim India, is unfazed by Indians failing the international yardstick by uh, telling the BBC it's not size, it's what you do with it that matters. And apparently you get AIDS with yours. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from our population, the evidence as I- is Indians are doing pretty well. It doesn't matter if you could fucking shoot a load. You could shoot a load with a fucking half-inch penis and get a woman pregnant, you dope. With apologies to the poet Alexander Pope, you could say, Four inches and centimeters, let fools contend. I like when a little culture is thrown into a dick story. All right. How great is that? That Indians have small cocks? Fantastic. (laughs) 
Hezbollah made his first TV appearance since the fighting started, and he vowed to beat back any ground invasion Israel may be considering. He's also condemned Israel's bomb attacks on lesbians. Excuse me, Lebanon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those dykes. Uh, lesbians. Good old lesbians. That's good. They slip up. What are you, you going to do with their human? A problem solver's alert about a man wanted for grabbing women's backsides at local stores. The Seminole County Sheriff's Office says several women, in fact, have complained of unwanted touching at the Publix and a Target is... on West Lake Mary Boulevard. As soon as we get our hands on a sketch of the suspect or we get some surveillance video, we'll, of course, show it to you so that you can be forewarned. <laughs> so you can see a man grabbing a woman's yeah, ass. I think it's probably the, it's Seminole County. Uh, Seminole, <laughs> Seminole Fluid County. <laughs> it happened at Target. Did it? <laughs> Does anybody remember last time? What is that? Oh, exactly. <laughs> Which one does that mean? <laughs> what? <laughs> target? That's what uh, happened at Target. Like her ass is the target? Hey, wow. Listen, come on. I've had some great lines say, you make one little dumb line, and you guys will turn it into a documentary. We I'm always surprised there's not a it. fucking Bravo film crew behind me now because of that one line. No, target. dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> Where is Hakeem? Take me to the Waldorf Astoria. Shut your goddamn mouth! What? 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 Target? Excuse me, but I do believe that sucked ass. <laughs> Target. Shut up! What? Shut up! Shut up! <laughs> Shut up! Target. I'm gonna kiss you on the mouth. <laughs> All right. Well, that was terrific. <laughs> trying to think of appropriate funny store names. There are none. <laughs> no. That's the whole line. store thing. As soon as he said, I'm like, all right, store, stores. That might make sense here. Yes. How about Buns and Noble? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he was in Siemens. Go ahead. Uh, Go ahead, Rich. There's two. You, a, not, a, not a and you S? Doing. Huh? All right. Uh, <laughs> Are there even ANSs around anymore? Who knows? Rich is going to do one. Go ahead. All right, Rich. Uh, maybe it was our Jiffy Lube. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I can do this all day. <laughs> stupid! You're so stupid! Oh, my Jiffy Lube. I hate you. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Uh, someone it, suggesting Starbucks. Uh, <laughs> there you go, Starbucks. Starbucks. How about Bunkin Donuts? <laughs> 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 well, it's been a while. And Rears and Roebuck? And go. <laughs> <laughs> and go. <laughs> oh. uh, God damn uh, it. <laughs> what? Uh, target. Work off Toys R Us. There might be something there. Oh. Wow. Yeah. That's a tough one. <laughs> well, who was he grabbing? Boys are us? <laughs> I, got, I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't even worked your way up to nothing yet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> a killing clubs. Killing clubs. Uh, no doubt. <laughs> I will never deny that, by the way. Kill. I don't want to confuse the issue. Rich <laughs> kills in comedy And clubs. I kill on radio, too, yes, in a do. different way. But not the way you would like to kill on the radio. <laughs> no, Our I own listeners are life. helping out. They oh. are? Home Deep Hole. <laughs> <laughs> Rear One Imports. Oh, okay. How about, how about Raples? <laughs> <laughs> the lady needed a Bed Bath & Beyond Waka Waka from Chester's Liver. Or Bed Bath & Behind. Behind, that's the uh, joke. Ah, uh, oh, how about JC Penis? <laughs> Best from part. Brian from Buffalo. Sam Ass. <laughs> <laughs> how about Dan from uh, Pottstown, Pennsylvania? Askin Robbins. JC Pussies. <laughs> there you go. Just grabbing it from the front? No. Uh, well, let's go to Axe in Maine. Uh, Axe, what's up? Yeah, how about uh, Pimpacrombie and Bitch? 
said Abercrombie and Fitch. We got oh, it. Got it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> really? We thought it was in... Rich, you're off the hook. We yeah. thought it was instead of TJ Maxx. <laughs> right, exactly. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of Abercrombie. You know, instead of Abercrombie and Fitch, like that was going to make it better. You know, instead of J.C. Crew, what? <laughs> oh, I got a little fire on my stove. Let me throw some gas on it. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Dick Sporting Goods. If it's uh, any Dylan? consolation, people are having a hard time coming up with anything uh, funny. I'm, what about I'm... Dwayne Rear from Billy H. in Queens? It's a tough yeah, one. Yeah, it's a tough one. All right, well. All right. Let's go to Max in Dallas. Max. Morning, boy. Hi. Hey, Max. How about bed, butt, and beyond? Poking out. No. Well, no. All right, end of bit. It's not yeah. funny anymore. It wasn't even to begin with, to be honest. No. Yeah. Terrible all the way through. Yeah. <laughs> that was five minutes of terribleness. Yeah. If we did it with those three sticks, it would have worked a lot better. If you were juggling... Yeah, like, the, the like the kid on American Idol. Do you know how to juggle? <laughs> Explaining it. Do you know how to juggle? A little, yeah. All right, let's see. What do you got? Give me two checkbooks. Oh, no. <laughs> Jesus, on. what vaudevillian <laughs> steamer trunk did you pull that joke out of? <laughs> Fucking A. All right, all right. All right. Uh, to my daughter, wait in this room while I go perform, and I'll be right back. It's like a little vaudeville actor brings his... Okay, I'll juggle. Hold on. Oh, my God. <laughs> Do you have grenades, Stan? <laughs> wow. I was just saying to go with those bombs. <laughs> Did I say J.C. Crew? Oh, boy. Yeah, I'm having a tough time. So I, I heard it. I didn't catch it. Said J. Crew. No, I wouldn't have known. Oh, boy. I should have known that one. <laughs> I'm sorry for being an ass. All right, we really were going to play My Baby is Black here, and and, I'm, and we're focusing, we're concentrating, we're trying to get My Baby Black is uh, on, but there's just breaking news about one of the American Idol contestants, and I, we just can't help ourselves. The fat, retarded kid. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's uh, friends with Bush Baby. Bush Baby, yeah, they, they kind of did one of those things where they made him look like they were pals. Well, they palled around because they I, palled around. I guess you got to wait like eighteen hours just to finally get in front of some type of judge. Yeah, so uh, I guess like uh, gay people have what they call gaydar. They could detect each other and hook up. They have uh, like a retard radar mm -hmm. where they kind of hook up uh, uh, at these things, and uh, they did a whole little segment on them. And um, there was one, and he was small. He looked like the Bush baby. <laughs> Like Simon called him, be a big eyes. He was kind of hairy, uh, just a uh, wreck. And then uh, he buddied up with this fat kid. He looks like he should have been in the woods in Lord of the Rings. Yeah, he was like really like a yeah kind of a kind of a golem right creature with yeah, hair, hobbit like thing, something that yeah. had something to do with Lord of the Rings. And then they had uh, this uh, fat kid. Fat. His waist was sixty. It was giant. And he really did not seem right. I was watching the show and just went like, oh, no. What this, are they doing? He's not right, this kid. Has this bad lisp and everything. And he sang, and it was awful. And uh, they, they were nice to him, though. You know, they didn't completely trash him right to his face, which I think saved the show. <laughs> but uh, he's making the rounds. Apparently, he's a big celebrity now. You ready for the breaking news? Breaking news. The Special Olympics standing up for American Idol after a person with disabilities auditioned for the show. Land that I love, stand beside her and guide. You know, it wasn't that bad. It really wasn't. He tried so hard to. She's basically saying, wow, a retard could sing. Hey, look at that. Wow, for a waterhead. <laughs> Why couldn't she just say retarded person? That's not insulting. Why'd she have to say a person with disability? That could be what did he have the legs? Retarded is not the it's it's like Oriental used to be uh acceptable and then Asian. Now it's like black and African American. Retarded is not used anymore. But you don't use it. A person with disabilities could be like that doesn't sum that could be any disability. That even, could be a guy in a wheelchair that uh, yeah, got no paralyzed. Uh, uh, Stephen Hawking. He's disabled. Hey, yes. Hey, uh, does his mind work the same as this uh, fat kid? And let's be honest, so. 
the the disabled are just like us. Uh, if you're a disabled dude with two legs, you don't want to be lumped in the same category as a waterhead. Right. I say this kid. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, though. Waterhead. It's true. I say this kid is handy capable handy of capable. eating everything in the house. <laughs> Do you realize they could have said, that idiot reporter could have said, you know, a person with disabilities, and it could have been Stevie Wonder. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, that's just, how safe America is right now. Disabil yeah, he's disabled. He's blind, right. And sings great. I think he's got a career in front of him, that little Stevie Wonder. But he's, behind him doesn't make any difference. <laughs> he certainly isn't blind. He's on the seafood diet. He... Huh? Uh-oh. What's that mean? That's the old joke. Um, don't see food, don't eat food. <laughs> <laughs> anyway... <laughs> Anyway, what I find really hilarious in this clip is, is the anchor woman there surprised that the guy could sing. Yeah. And I... You know, it wasn't that bad. It really it was horrible. tried so hard to. Jonathan Jane, a Special Olympics athlete, last week he tried out for the hit talent show. The Special Olympics website complimented the judges for being gracious and encouraging toward Jane, which they were for him. It was his friend. He made fun of his body, though. Well, you know, they said he looked like Randy. Simon <laughs> said, Randy, did he borrow your trousers? Right, he did say that, but, you know, anyhow. But he was a lot kinder to him than he was his buddy. Now, the organization says people with disabilities don't... Don't want pity? You can catch a new episode of All America right. Tonight at eight, right here on Fox Five. Hey, you heard? Hey, they, hey you heard them? They, they, they got don't it want then. pity. They won't find any here. How funny they broke that on Fox too, American Idol's uh, network. Yeah. Of course, <laughs> they do twenty American Idol stories a day on uh, the various Fox News. Look again, it's on commercial for it. I guess yeah. Fox has turned into one huge commercial for American Idol all day long. They got some kind of American Idol twist. The State of the Union addresses tonight also? Fantastic. That'll be wonderful. We'll get to listen to him. How many times will we hear freedom, terror, uh, freedom against terror, stay the course? Uh, it's the same thing. The future? The watch. Yeah, it's going to all be about protecting the... Uh, blah, 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 God, blah. Do anything else. Listen to this. Well, a company in Colorado has come up with a new line of underwear. Yeah, it's designed to get rid of that smell of past gas. I kid you not, folks. Uh, yeah, we can't joke about this. Yeah. Under ease pants are airtight and lined with a replaceable filter. The felt, charcoal, and fiberglass wool captures and eliminates the smell. The company's president says they get a lot of jokes about the undies, but they know it's a serious product that serves a purpose. Mm. You know what? I wish I had that growing up because my brothers have tortured me so many times. <laughs> no, they didn't. Uh, <laughs> wow, they tortured you with their guests. Die. Uh, she should wear those over her face. Every time she talks, it just gets muffled. So the stink of her bad jokes doesn't infect the studio. <laughs> Corny hole, shut up. You know what? I wish I had that growing up because my brothers have tortured me so many times. <laughs> I cannot tell you. And I hope they're watching because one day it's going to be a payback. I, do, I don't want to smell the filter. One day it's going to be a payback? What's what the you, payback? What's the payback? A lot of White Castle Nothing. hamburgers and grapes and, yeah. and half and half. No payback. Shut up. Yeah, what, what's the payback? You, you tie them up and make them watch your broadcast? <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> What's the payback? I don't know. What I need to know what the payback is. They just know. babble. How do you pay someone back? What, what are you going to do? Go to his house with your filtered underpants on? And what? <laughs> and they, and, they, and they're, they're like, these things, there's an article on, there's like a waistband that kind of keeps the, anything from seeping out. Yeah. yeah. So they're like diapers in Very a weird way. Very tight. They just look awful. Purpose. You know what? I wish I had that growing up because my brothers have tortured me so many times. <laughs> I cannot tell you. And I hope they're watching because one day it's going to be a payback. I, did, I don't want to smell the filter. Just when you go to dump it, it's got to oh, be Oh, like, yeah. It's yeah, got to be gross no matter what. No matter what. Why would you do that? Of course you wouldn't. <laughs> How about being locked in a car? Damn, she a car. <laughs> Windows rolled up. <laughs> We've all been there, Steve. Let's do some weather. Yeah, there you go. Of course. Uh, let's oh, do some yeah, weather. Yeah, We're treading yeah, on yeah, some yeah. dangerous ground here. Look, I want to be the next Dan Rather. Can't be so, doing uh, these. I, I uh, can't be talking about this. Gas. Can't be talking about gas. God forbid you talk about gas. But is that really helpful on a date, though, even though you don't smell when your pants are kind of constantly like ballooning out like you're a horse rider? <laughs> <laughs> you have pantaloons every so often. And you got to think there's some kind of plastic type material. Yeah. Sounds oh. bad. You just Walk. take the filter out and. 
put it over our mouth and nose like uh, ether. <laughs> Knock <Yeah>. her out. <laughs> Dual purpose. <laughs> what, what, why do your pants keep ballooning out? Either you eat badly or you're Augustus Gloop. <laughs> <laughs> Was that the one that got fat, Augustus? Yeah, yeah I believe like so. Yeah, 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 God, yeah. I didn't screw that up. Yeah, you did good. Got to put some fun stuff in there, though. As it puffs up, right through the filter, put one of these. <laughs> <laughs> so at least you know when it's happening. It has all the fun of a fun sound. Yet none of that awfulness that uh, is usually associated with gas. Man who took lampshade uh, lie detector seeks settlement. <laughs> this dummy. <laughs> this is an amazing story. Uh, the funniest story of the day. Of the month. A mentally disabled man who was given a fake lie detector test is still waiting for a settlement after six years. Uh, Pearl Police admitted that officers... Check this out. Yeah. Put a lampshade on Huey Granger's uh, head in June 2002. Yeah. Granger had filed a police report claiming that his daughter was attacked by her boyfriend in their Pearl home. While at the police station, officers Keith Peterson and Jeff Thames gave him a fake lie detector test. Granger is adamant that two former Pearl police officers should pay for his pain and humiliation. He is asking for $2 million in civil in a civil lawsuit against the two men. He's a retard. Six flags! He's a retard and put a lampshade over his head. Yeah, and told him it was a lie detector. <laughs> and he's got a daughter? Yeah. That's frightening. Uh, it really is. I'm asking for $2 million tax-free in my pocket, and my insurance insurance paid for the rest of my life, Granger said Friday. Uh, he hit me in the back of my head and messed my neck up pretty bad and put a lampshade on my head with electric wires on wow. hooked to it. Looked better than his hairdo. Yeah, and you know it didn't light anything up. That dull bulb <laughs> couldn't even read by it. <laughs> he su actually, his lawyer stepped in because he originally sued for eight lollipops. <laughs> <laughs> you dumbbell. Hey, ah, what a dope. And we've had an ongoing theme on the show this morning, talking about the morning zoos out there and the, and the, the Elvis Duran guy is number one in New York. And uh, the reason he's number one in New York, he's not taking this angle on the story. Oh, I don't think so. If they're if they're even reporting on this story, they're like, oh, you got to hear this. What happened to this uh, this this man? It was terrible. <laughs> we find it hilarious. He Once knew it wasn't a lie detector. He knew it was a life of the party detector. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that lampshade on the head. Oh, what a fool. What <laughs> a, a fool. Let me back up again. He hit me in the back of my head and messed my neck up pretty bad. Then put a lampshade on my head with electric wire. I can't get past that. That's great. <laughs> I can't. And put a lampshade on my head with... <laughs> <laughs> with <laughs> with electric wires hooked to it, it was trying to shoot electricity uh, to me and get me to change my story to what happened to my daughter. The incident was videotaped. Oh, oh my on. God! YouTube. Get that tape. Is that anywhere? YouTube. What could be funnier than just seeing this lummox <laughs> sit there? With, uh, the, the funniest part would be to look in the corner and see the the shadeless lamp, just the bulb, <laughs> just the bare bulbs, knowing the the shade is being used for something hilarious. Like it's in the corner, and then you pan to the left, and Dumb Bellow is just sitting there <laughs> with his with his, uh, his stupid <laughs> Siemens furniture hat. <laughs> Uh, the incident was videotaped, and uh, the city admitted the officers were wrong. Peterson and Thames were suspended and both eventually left the department. Granger, who is mentally disabled, filed a lawsuit for civil rights violations. Federal judge ruled a few years ago that the city could not be held accountable for the officers' uh, actions uh, because there was not a documented pattern of hist uh, or history of abuse. They just figured they could get away with yeah, it. Yeah, one-time deal. How many retards you get in there, you can put a lampshade on. You can't do this every every other day. It's hysterical. You know, it's you save this to do it one time, one time only. Oh, I don't have nothing against them either, Granger said. I just hope they'll make up their minds and get this case settled because it's been going on too long. Two million dollars. They should just give him a bag of marbles and say, here's your two million. Thank you. Oh, boy. <laughs> I go try to buy a house with it. <laughs> just waving a plastic bag of marbles <laughs> at a real estate agent. Here you go, two million dollars. No, these are marbles, dummy. <laughs> they walk into Levitt's and he asks for the hat section. <laughs> I need earmuffs. He's got two doilies on the side of his head. <laughs> 
guy's a boob. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what kind of an idiot? He's awful. His hands are chilly, so he puts slip covers over them. <laughs> A horse's ass. <laughs> Let's be able to put a lampshade on his head and call it a lie detector. <laughs> How did you not your whole, what did you think you just had, did you, like when they did that, did you think, oh my God, I've had lie detector tests around my house my entire life? <laughs> Everywhere. Everywhere I go, there's no I've been lying my entire life. Oh no. Hey, can we get a lampshade for E-Rock? Oh. oh. E-Rock, would you try it out as our stunt boy today? What? <laughs> Why? Why? Just First reasonable thing I've heard him say. <laughs> He's had enough. Uh, retard sex from Boston listening on BCN. He writes, uh, Opie, this happened on The Wire. Yes, I remember this episode. The cops, uh, uh, Anthony, they did something similar on The Wire. The cops put a corner boy's hands on the Xerox machine and printed out pieces of paper with true and false on them. So they'd ask him a question, oh, put his hands on go. the Xerox machine, and then uh, true would pop, you know, pop out and they'd yeah. show it to the, the corner boy. And uh, it was they believed it as far as the show goes. A yes, mentally Jimmy. disabled man. Yeah. Oh. Dolt. A dolt. <laughs> a blithering idiot. <laughs> what a fool. Oh, covering up that Mo haircut. <laughs> Mo Howard haircut. Oh, Stupid lampshade. Put the lampshade on there and just trim around the lampshade. Instant retard haircut. <laughs> He dozes off and he's chilly laying on the floor, so he has to pull the sofa on top of him to <laughs> keep warm. <laughs> guy's a clod. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, uh, very nice. He should have fingerprinted him with a toaster. <laughs> <laughs> here, put your hands in here, dummy. <laughs> we have to take a tongue print. See that socket over there? <laughs> oh. oh, God. Yeah. I, well, can we talk to this guy on the phone? Uh, what guy? The retard? Yeah, I would like to. Why not? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd love to. Mm. Instead mm. of I, Robot, he's doing a movie called I, Diet. <laughs> D-I-O-T. <laughs> no. Wordplay. Word oh. Shame, shame. Well, I don't know. Let's go to the fun meter Jimmy. I, I might be uh, wrong here. Mm. One sec! Uh, oh, yeah. oh, damn. That hurt. That's not a good one. Yikes. Way. And uh, a radio show. <laughs> Uh, billboard controversy. Well, some people say it's fine, while others say it's making fun of a blind person. You'll have to draw your own conclusions about the billboards on Interstate 65. They've only been up a few weeks and are already causing a buzz. Oh, I thought it was very offensive. Barbara Alk of Athens was visiting the birthplace of Helen Keller today. I can kind of see it because she was blind. Come see what she couldn't. But I don't think there was any ill intent. Others in Tuscumbia could see how the sign could be misinterpreted. They might not know the full history of a Shoals area. You know, it, it could come off as a joke to them. I was really upset about it because Helen Keller is one of our, um, you know, heroes. Hero? hero. What'd she do? Nothing but bumping the walls and knock <laughs> dishes over. <laughs> yeah, real hero. You know how I grab from other people's plates on... On the dinner table. What does she do but bruise her, her shins a lot? <laughs> she did nothing. She stubbed more toes than anyone else in the history of man. <laughs> the person who was training her impatient, that's a hero. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. You know how expensive it was to have her around, breaking everything in sight? Uh, billboard to tour her birthplace reads, yeah, come see what she couldn't. <laughs> that's fine. It makes sense. She couldn't. See what she couldn't. Helen yeah. Keller's birthplace is one of the largest tourist attractions here in the Shoals. Twyla Hyde just moved to the Shoals area a few years ago. When she saw the billboard, she thought it was insightful. It shows that insightful. we can see what she couldn't, but at the same time, I believe that she could see in her mind's eye. Helen Keller's birthplace brings more than 60,000 visitors a year to the Shoals. Catchy advertising is key in bringing new tourists to the area. I didn't really have much of a reaction. I knew it was an ad. She was an extremely intelligent woman. And I don't believe she herself would be bothered by that. Colbert County Tourism and the Helen Keller Home teamed up to create the ad. They tell us they meant no dis Boring. disrespect by the billboard, and they just hope more people will come and visit. Uh, Where was she born? It's probably a nuclear reactor. <laughs> 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 Old bad eyes. It would have been offensive if it mentioned how she answered the waffle iron <laughs> instead of the phone. No, that's, well, you call ahead and it's joke. an iron. <laughs> it's an iron. Yeah. Let's go to Daryl in Louisiana. Daryl. Or see what Helen couldn't. It's, it's, it's telling you to avoid potholes in the area. 
Hey, guys. Hey, Daryl. Or if it had just a hold picture on, of... Hold on, hold on. If it said Helen Keller's house and it had, like, a photo of two eyes with a circle with a line through them. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> All right, supercar weekend. But, but Anthony, before that, everyone knows by now, uh, uh, actually, the, the, in, the entire show is getting obsessed with the fact that you're... You're uh, buying a lot of guns and driving fast, and uh, mm. and you now carry a gun within your home. Yeah. Well, uh, we got another um, home invasion. See? And when these pop up, which is pretty much one a day at this point. Oh, they just all the time. We they're like, out there. They're out there. We like to throw them on the air and get your opinion on them. Yes. Okay? This one uh, has a nice little twist, though. Listen to this one. Women in this complex better close, secure, and lock those glass doors tonight mm -hmm. because one unidentified woman who lives in this condo development on Hannah Road in Edison wished it was a nightmare last night, but she wasn't having a bad dream. The naked man standing in front of her was real. <laughs> naked man in front of her. That, that's what you want. That's what you want. Oh. Well, how did he get in? Uh, well... You're going to lose your mind. Uh-oh. This is how he got in. Our victim was asleep at the time. Um, apparently, he goes near her bed, and at one point, he begins to caress her inner thigh area. She immediately awakes. She turns. She sees that this man is a total stranger, and uh, according to our victim, he was unclothed at the time. He was naked. Lieutenant Shannon now knows he has a sicko on his hands. Sicko. The woman didn't scream. The next step could have been rape. Luckily, she was not injured. Making it easy, police say, the woman's sliding glass door was unlocked, so the nude intruder was able to slip right in. <sighs> Why? You dummy. You dummy. She was asking for it. What? I don't mean like the, the uh, sexual assault. You can't She's say that. She's asking for some kind of crime to happen. A uh, robbery, a uh, murder, possibly rape. You're inviting it. I'm in Why a, would you leave your sliding door? I'm in uh, agreement online. with you. Why would you take that chance? You gotta lock your doors at night. So, yes, that, you do. that, that Michael Moore, you know, made us all look like crazy people here in America. Exactly. Remember his uh, what was it, Bowling for Columbine, when he uh, went to Canada and everyone had their doors had unlocked. Their doors open. And then he looked at America like you, you, we're all just paranoid. That's Canada, fatso. <laughs> it's not here. That's you don't right. leave your doors open here. Oh, because we're so fearful because of the media. Yeah, was it a news guy naked rubbing her inner thigh? <laughs> yeah, the media's coming in my house. It was Dan Rather. Yeah. He has nothing better Dan than Dan Rather that. came in nude with a mic. <laughs> right. Or <laughs> Tom Brokaw. Tom Brokaw. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Miss. It's Tom Brokaw, NBC Nightly News. Well, you I was NBC just Nightly. rubbing your inner thighs, <laughs> hoping you'd enjoy this. I'm with the media. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> what an ass. Yeah, I saw your uh, screen, uh, your uh, sliding, 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 <laughs> your sliding, the, the big glass door, and the back was left open, and I decided I was going to come in nude, because I'm Tom Broca, NBC Nightly News, and it's the media that you have to be afraid of, Missy, the media. Now talk into my microphone, and I'll talk into the one I'm holding. <laughs> the media. Yeah. That Michael Moore is a dunce. There are things going on. And and whether they are uh, as prevalent as the news likes to say mm -hmm. is debatable, of course. But it's not like they don't happen. And when they do happen uh, and you're in that situation, you're just going, oh, my God, this is happening. You're horrified. I need a gun. I need a gun. Naked guy rubbing your thigh. You need a gun. You need a gun. I can, I'm starting to see it your way, Ant. Might have to. Although this one should have like locked her doors. Yeah. That's just that's absolutely just dumb. Door that's should have been locked. Stupid. Crazy woman leaving their door open like that. Right. <sighs> and then we got um, uh, the media talking to a stupid. Uh, someone wrote this down because I know I overused the word stupid. Uh, I think it was Sam. Uh, the media talks to a stupid woman who lives in the area. Jimmy loves when they. You know, talk to the locals about a, a horrific thing that's going on in their neighborhood. They always have something to add that you just wouldn't have thought of. It's really <laughs> interesting. Not even a simple robbery here. Usually so safe. That's why people are relaxed here and often let their guard down. In fact, one whole day I kept the door open and I, you know, went to work. And when I came back, 
I wasn't really sure that everything was going to be there and everything was fine. And best advice cops say, lock your doors, windows, sliders. Advice Hema Krishnan will take. Most of the times it's open. No, a, a <laughs> cop shouldn't have to tell you that. No. A cop shouldn't have to say, you know, the best advice that I could give you people is to lock everything. It's common sense. Yeah. Did you hear how interesting her commentary was? The one day she went away, the yeah. was old. She didn't know what was going to happen. How do we huh? make 13 episodes out of this for a show? <laughs> 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 God, <laughs> Who, how would you watch that in the newsroom and go, perfect, cut, right yeah, there, yeah. watch that. Yeah, thank you. Wonderful. This is a good job. Our story. Thank you, thank you. Hey, like, I wasn't sure if the things would be there, but they were. Yeah. Oh, great. Well, they... I thought things would be okay, and they were okay. Back to you, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> horrendous. <laughs> it's horrendous. <laughs> so there you go, another home invasion. See, you got to watch out. Absolutely. Home invasions. All right, one more story before we get to line of the day. This is... Uh, line of the day. This is just... Terrific. Well, a disturbing scene in a Sacramento home. Hundreds of dead cats have been found inside. And that's only the beginning of this story. The beginning. Oh, that that's only the beginning, beginning of this story. story. And that's only the beginning of this story. <laughs> right. You saw like Jodie Foster going into that thing? Let <laughs> on <laughs> here. How is that the beginning of the story? The beginning. 300 dead cats, and that's the beginning? That's the beginning. All right, let's see. What happened? Well, a disturbing scene in a Sacramento home. Hundreds of dead cats have been found inside. Why? I know we do this all the time. Same shit every different day, whatever. But why can't they just be human beings? Yeah. Instead of the, the, the news voice and everything. Wow. Blah, 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 blah. Wouldn't you be like, just the beginning. you're not going to believe this one. Oh, my yeah. God. Just be human. Right. That's only the beginning of this story. Laura Cole. <laughs> I can't get past that part of this. <laughs> There's a dipsy doodle in that uh, in that word there, Ed. <laughs> Laura Cole is at 18th Street near Meadowview to explain how they were discovered this morning. Bizarre story here, Laura. Long story here, Ron, but Ron and Chris, I can still smell the stench of feces and urine coming from the home that no one's living in now. It's now not this part of the story. Uh, what? <laughs> what you smell is not part of the story. <laughs> get to the story, whore. Your just... cunt is not much better. <laughs> that no one's living that. in now. Now, this all Thanks. started as a 911 checkup call. Someone called 911 from this residence, hung up the phone. Officers came out, and a 46-year-old man, Michael Parnell, answered the door. They asked, can we come in and check around? He said no. They pushed their way in, saw his 84-year-old mother sitting on the couch, appeared to be just fine. <laughs> this stupid oh, boy. mother just sitting there has no clue. No that. clue. She's living in a house of horror. Her house fucking, of shit, dead her, cats, her and her fucking serial killer, you know, wannabe is killing cats in the neighborhood and freezing them in fucking freezers. What the hell? And she's watching Jeopardy as all this is going oh. on. Her feet her. Up in two cat slippers, <laughs> right? Uh, just, old fucking bad. She's wearing a cat hat. She doesn't even know. <laughs> My hat has a tail. My hat has maggots in it. I wish a Negro would punch it off. <laughs> She's got a comforter made of cat fur, just no clue. It's, no, it's actually a bunch of cats that piled on her when she sleeps. Right. And she sleeps and he throws them on like fucking like hard discs of pizza. <laughs> and they land on her. Thank you! <laughs> One side looks like a cat, the other side's just perfectly flat. It's been laying on the floor for so long. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Coagulated blood in the side of its little fat face. <laughs> it's probably just petting dead cats, just assuming oh. they're taking a little nap. Yeah. <laughs> the cat's just staring at it with those glazed over <laughs> dead eyes. And she just keeps asking over and over again, What do you want? What do you what? want? What do you want? Yeah, are you hungry? <laughs> Why won't you answer me? This one loves me. He never leaves my lap. <laughs> Look, the skeletal one in my lap loves me. He just sits here and dry rots. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking old bag. <sighs> Hung up the phone. Officers came out, and a 46-year-old man, Michael Parnell, answered the door. They asked, can we come in and check around? He said no. They pushed their way in, saw his 84-year-old mother sitting on the couch, appeared to be just fine. But when they got inside, that smell of urine and stench just got worse. They found 30 cats inside the home, alive. That's when they called animal control in. And when animal control got out here, they found three freezers full of dead cats. We're talking 300 dead cats right now, and Animal Control says this is going to be a lengthy investigation. Jimmy, I'm a little confused. You think, um, I don't know, you think this 46-year-old uh, likes cats? I don't think this guy likes no? cats. I think he loves them! <laughs> Whoa! 
He does, does he? I say, Didn't yes. see that coming. No way. I throw, <laughs> I'm old Curveball Norton. That's my new nickname. That's <laughs> all. Curveball Norton. Curveball Norton. It's a swish. It, it's Jim Norton uh, catchphrase day. That's right. He did wizardry. 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 Murder. He said murder. And now you did your love it. That's what these cats are. They're, uh, they're, they're, they're implemented in wizardry. <laughs> you just swing a dead cat over your head. It will rain. <laughs> I, I just find the black humor in this. The fucking mother is just living among this clueless. There was probably a time she was like, you know, baking the birthday cake. Oh, for her yeah, son and yeah. Everything, and everything was relatively normal in the house. And fast forward a few decades, and she's living in a house of horrors. House of horrors. Because <laughs> her stupid son hasn't gotten laid yet. Lost his mind. It's a serial killer in training. Yeah, son's a shitbag. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he puts him in the freezer. What, what are you going to do with him? What do you do after that, Jimmy? Why wouldn't you just bury him or something? Exactly. What is he saving him for? Chop when do you thaw them out? When do you go, it's time to thaw out number 216? <laughs> when does that happen? What occasion calls for thawing one of the animals out? Yeah, why freeze them if you're never going to thaw them out? He just doesn't want to throw them out. I mean, he loves them. You know how cat lovers. You know how like, older cute, like, women, like kind of soccer moms, they have like their collections. Like I don't know. They might collect pigs or penguins. Yeah, and that whole house unicorns. is filled with yeah, unicorns. You think he, like, plays with the cats, he breaks them out of the freezer and lines them up and stuff yeah. and, and admires his collection? It's like rubbing a hamburger with freezer burn on it. He gets a little white stuff under his fingernail, it's like f- from a freezer, and he puts them back. Do you know how many fleas they must have in that fucking house? Oh, yeah. It must be infested with fleas. You think he, he like, uh, has to push a lot of dead cats a- a- away just to get to the milk or the frozen <laughs> food? Yeah, let me see what's dinner. in here. Dead cats, I dead imagine, cats. I imagine you didn't save mustard for regular food. It's all probably in this. <laughs> Look at him. He's like disturbing. <laughs> I don't know. Why would he do this? <laughs> Let's see if we can find out more. Uh, there was uh, an excessive amount of animals in this one particular house. He was not in the best of shapes. It was in, in, in pretty bad shape. There was a strong stench of a uh, strong odor of feces and urine. Now, Michael Parnell is charged with resisting arrest at this point. Animal cruelty charges could be coming once this investigation concludes. At this point, he doesn't face charges, but they've got to determine how these 300 cats died, whether or not he killed them, whether or not someone else killed them, or whether or not they just died of natural causes, and he froze them in the freezer. So a very disturbing and weird story. Yeah, that is very bizarre. Also, where did they come from? We have to thaw the bodies out, Sam. Oh, Jim C. I want to do a full autopsy. An autopsy? Why would you want to do that? On a cat? Yeah. The cause of death. <laughs> they were drinking the water. It was contaminated, Sam. <laughs> I could only talk to a whole colonel of corn teeth. <laughs> so now he's... <laughs> nice teeth, shit dick. <laughs> so he's going to... He's going to go to the uh, live stage show of Cats and try to get up on stage <laughs> so he could talk to the crowd. <laughs> There's a young girl. <laughs> I understand she wants to sleep with an older man in a members-only jacket. <laughs> <laughs> on a boat? <laughs> on a boat. I have an Asian friend <laughs> uh, whose face is as flat as these cats. <laughs> Sam, the fat, f- flat... Sometimes I don't talk too good when I'm trying to make fun of Sam's fat face. <laughs> flat... Yes. What's ru- what's flatter, the bottom of the dead cat, Sam's face, or your girlfriend's uh, ass? I don't want to feed into that type of talk. There's a girl. <laughs> the girl. I just want to talk to her. If I could only talk to them. <laughs> There's a girl. Yeah. A beautiful uh, girl. We're going to help her. <laughs> she's innocent, but she's in danger. Is she? Hey, where does the escape go? That was very well written. <laughs> very, very organic teenage dialogue. No catchphrase. Keep waiting out there for the catchphrase. The fucking the giant crowd outside wants, wants fucking the catchphrase. It's not going to happen. Yeah, I'm sorry. No. Okay. Sorry, folks. Yeah, I'm gotta, not predictable. He pre- was murdered. Oh, Whoa. Never say no to you people. Never say no to you people. Nothing makes you feel good about your radio show than, than seeing that three people showed up for the show. That's true. Could be worse. <laughs> Park. By, by three. <laughs> oh, shit. Check it, text. <laughs> let's go to, let's go to uh, Mark in Tennessee. Mark. Hey, uh, when is hey guys? When is Foundry gonna have the video uploaded of "Remove Your Cat"? Remove your cat. Oh boy. Oh, 
Christ. You'll never be able Later. to find it. It's behind Cam Girl number 1406. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Win a Foundry logo pair of underpants. <laughs> Let's not forget his new name is uh, well his new title is super duper executive producer. That's cool. Yes, we like that. That's right. Because we don't want him to feel like someone Jeez, might yeah. be trying to take over his job. Of course not. Well, why, why would he? The guy's got his job. There's only a three-hour show. Yeah. <laughs> you know. It's easy. Two-hour shit dick doesn't look it on a business card. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, you don't understand. <laughs> Fucking whole thing's a mess. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're we're actually broadcasting from a bus that's crashing. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking mind bending. <laughs> uh. I enjoyed the ride as uh, we head toward the fucking toward the cliff. fucking brick wall. <laughs> right. With a cliff on the other side of it in case we happen to pass through. <laughs> <laughs> ah, fucking Jim, man. All right, you want to do one more or you want to do a uh, line of the day? What time is it? I don't, I, I don't look at the clock. Me ever. neither. I'm having so much fun. I never look at the clock. I, I, I don't. It's it's ten fifty four. Line of the day. Line of the day. <laughs> this is how you know you're anxious to get out. Like, if someone talk about something, just, and then someone just asks you what time it is. Like, yeah, I thought it was a good movie. Yeah, it was a good movie. <laughs> what time is it? Ten fifty four. Only five minutes to go. Six. Oh yeah. <laughs> I round it off because it's like 10.54 and I have 10.53 seconds. on the old iPhone, and the iPhone don't lie. That means we got seven more minutes to go. Just like Shakira's hips. Actually, this is a really good story. Let's... <laughs> <laughs> I shit, why clap? No, that shit don't lie. <laughs> shit. Remember that motherfucker went up to Fuji's and shit? Ah, oh, shit. Ah, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Is this uh, Insomniac Jimmy? Yeah, I'm Making tired. I only got a couple hours. I'm in such a depression. I only got a couple hours. Aww. I'm gonna go home and just flick my dick. Right now it's so small, it looks like the fucking the tail of a piglet. <laughs> <laughs> but dirtier. <laughs> uh, curls just... Well don't watch any oh, of those. Oh look dumb... at that fucking Hillary. What did she, what did she just go three rounds in the gym sparring? That fucking towel around her neck? That's a scar for <laughs> it's an something, ascot. Jimmy. Oh, I hope it gets caught in a fucking helicopter. <laughs> Omar's okay. She's fucking hanging like Omar from a fucking fucking I go Omar. <laughs> stupid mullet blown in the breeze. Omar. You expect me to believe that Hillary was a lesbian because everyone says so? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like how after Omar was long gone and they're talking about him, Tony just kind of points at the sky when he was talking about him. Hey, Omar! And he kind of points up, yeah. like you remember the last time you saw him, bloody and hanging out of the copter a couple of seconds ago. I love he says, Omar's okay. You know, he hates him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Five grand. <laughs> All right, we got another, we got another cute news story, and then we're gonna Tony. Do one today. Yes, Tony. We'll make this quick and painless. Here we go. A man's arms were pinned in machinery. <laughs> oh. Amazingly, he managed to dial nine one one on his cell phone with his toes. All right, why is that amazing? Because most yeah. people have on shoes and would dial nine pound <laughs> one two three one two three. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that amazing? It might not have been the first uh, attempt either. Absolutely. He might have called a few other people first, checked his messages. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. And the motherfucker sent a text message. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Coke Logic is promoting onaradio.com. Is that a good site? I, I, I see like fan sites popping up that are just yeah. want, want to talk that's about the fast. show. And then they'll eventually... Go yeah, bad. eventually turn to shit and oh, go I bad. Don't know. Uh, well, Coke this Roger. golf cart chase is really hysterical. No, what happened, Dan? I don't know. It's in Vegas. That's all I know. Suspect suspect makes off in golf cart. Oh boy, he didn't get too far on the foot, did he? <laughs> he just there fell he is, over. laying in rocks. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, that well, that's never down. good. Uh, uh, he should have hidden a tree. <laughs> Police never would have found him in a tree. In a good old tree. I got by a tree. Pretend you're an apple. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> On with his toes. NBC 15's Jenna Susco is live in Pensacola, where the man is recovering at a local hospital. And Jenna, rescue workers say it may have ended much differently if he didn't think on his feet. Yeah, that's right. See. Oh, God. He this guy's thinking on his feet. This See. guy's a heel. <laughs> See. <laughs> but he had to arch from one part of the story. Well, well, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know. That. Oh, this little piggy went to market. Get it? <laughs> if he didn't think on his feet.
Yeah. Yeah, that's right, Greg. He would have been stuck for at least See. several more it's hours. An ambulance or a tow more. truck? Wow, wow. Russian debate footage. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, hey, so, uh, <laughs> hey, 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 Paula. Um, so sorry, uh, guys. Oh, thank God we got a delay. They can't figure it out if they uh, start flipping channels. No, at sorry. least several more hours waiting for the morning crews to arrive. Now, what? Am I tired? ONARadio.com is K-Rock, Opie. Home of the show rundown. Oh, oh yeah. wow. Jesus. Yeah, you kind of <laughs> said <laughs> Wow. Wait, you, you don't know. That was a shit-talking site? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, wow. fuck, fuck them. Oh. All right, listen. <laughs> we had a corporate event last night we had to deal with. Wow. Waiting for the morning crews to arrive. Now, officials can't release his name to us, but they do tell us doctors were able Why? to save both of his arms, all because he was able to dial his cell phone using his feet. What mm. kind of machine was it? Yeah, they don't even go into detail. The call came from inside DRS Technologies at 2 a.m. Thursday morning. I'm calling from my cell phone. I'm stuck in a piece of machinery. I'm the only one in the building. I would have said, what's a cell phone? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Just really fucking the guy. Like, what? You calling from your cell phone? I'm stuck in that? a piece of machinery. Well, he got the message out quick. He didn't bullshit. No. <laughs> Good thing he doesn't have a fucking iPhone. Hello? <laughs> Hello? 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 <laughs> Call failed. Hello? 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 Oh, look! Little finger! Ha! 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 Move your finger lightly along the glass. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> fucking asshole Steve Jobs. <laughs> Can I take a picture of my cock and send it? No! <laughs> send it to a little website, and it comes up the size of a postage stamp. <laughs> Thank God, I made this guy at Verizon. Wait, you can't email pictures with the iPhone? right? No, you can email them, but you can't just, like, text them. Yeah. Let's say I took oh, a that's picture. what I meant. Like, no, you can't send me a picture that way right now? No, I, didn't know that. I get a Not through text. Says, no, it says, you have a message. You I thought you got the Blackbird. Oh, you have to I go to it. the... Fucking you my message dot com. It And you can yeah. see it the size of a postage stamp. Yeah, it's awful. And then what happens? And then what happens? Then you click mm. on it, and then you no, get to it see doesn't it. get bigger when you click on it. it no, all right, back to the it's story. shit. I gotta hear uh, cell phone again. Morning. I'm calling from my cell phone. I'm <laughs> stuck in a piece of machinery. I'm the only one in the building. Okay, what are you stuck in? What type of machinery? Like I'm it matters. my arms. I can't get out. How about the address, asshole? How are you calling me? <laughs> How are you calling me? Oh my god, this guy is just like, look, just send someone. Maybe someone was there and dialed the phone for him, you idiot. How Come are along. you calling me? You're full of shit. How are you calling me? I'm calling you on my cell phone. Okay, but you're pinned? I am pinned, right. He had to move his hip to knock his phone off of his belt and then remove his shoes with his feet and dial 911 with his toes. Very smart. Yeah. Good luck with the iPhone. You'd have to fucking put your big toe on that little arrow and try to scoop it to the left. <laughs> scoop it with your toe. <laughs> your, your toes have to dance lightly along the glass. Uh, uh, we got more of the 911 call. It was his only option. His arms were being crushed by a press-like machine, and no one would be in until the morning. Are we going to be able to get in the building? I don't know. They're on the way right now, okay? With his arms pinned, he was able to tell Cruz how to find him. Here! I'm over here! <laughs> <laughs> this is great. What a, that's a good plan. It's not like his fucking larynx was pinned. <laughs> I'm over here! Yeah, how would that have helped if his arms weren't pinned? He would have waved and they would have heard it? Well, that would have been funny if one of the rescue workers said, Where? Le where? where? Wave your hand. I can't see you. I can't. They're in the machine. Stop ironing your arms, sir. There's a problem here. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of fucking press was this asshole caught in? I don't know. Here! I'm over here! Do you hear him? Yeah. I'm here! They were able to go outside of the facility and shut down a compressor that controlled the unit. And by doing that, they could take a Halligan pry bar that we have on the trucks, lift the press unit up to free his arms, secure it in place, and extricate the patient. It's amazing. He's a lucky man. Smart man. We did contact DRS Technologies for comment about how the accident happened. They told me it's still under investigation. But guys, you know what? This really is truly an amazing story. I was looking at my phone. I'm guessing that it probably wasn't a flip phone, 
But if it was, I'm sure he probably could have figured that out probably. also. With Why don't you just look at his phone, stupid? Why right. speculate? He's not in the ocean, dead. Why are you speculating? Fucking asshole. How did he get his hands they're, caught in the fucking... They're the same in I every know. city and every town. <laughs> he said, you're terminated, fucker. And the machine came down <laughs> on his arms. <laughs> You're trying to clip his nails with a fucking meat grinder. <laughs> what a douche. Stephen S. from Bayshore writes, Rumor has it the guy was actually trapped in the foundrymusic.com website. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I was shaving my arms and a machine fell on them. <laughs> because they're very hairy. <laughs> Get it? Yes. <laughs> and that's how you dial a phone with your feet. <laughs> I have... I have another meeting with Stunt Brain. Yes, let me call Stunt Brain and see what he would him. do in this situation. Would I rather talk to Stunt Brain or stick both arms in this machine? <laughs> hey, I'm over here. Yes. I'm over here. It's Stunt Arms. <laughs> <laughs> I got my arms stuck in a in, in a in a uh, a press uh, in a uh, fucking in, in a, <laughs> yeah, in a uh, I said I'm tired in a fucking where they get the fucking honey. Oh, fucking bear in a beehive. Thank beehive. you. What the fuck's wrong with me? Help me. Yes. I'm stuck in a beehive. Right. I'm dialing with my rear claws, and I just <laughs> shit on my phone. Yes, and it's caught in my ass hair. <laughs> it's old printer press arms. I was trying to print a newspaper on my hands and arms. <laughs> <laughs> Distribution oh. one. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Dicky Punchcock. <laughs> Yet another line name. that I didn't get to use, but this one from Wackbag. Uh, uh, he writes, "Smart man. If he was smart, he wouldn't have tried to get a manicure from a meat grinder." <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. Oh, you did? Clipping his nails with a meat grinder. Oh, I didn't hear you, Dan. That he was fucking smart. He wouldn't have tried to paint his nails with a meat grinder. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> so that's funny. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Why does it all go back to Steve? I don't know why. Yes. We're obsessed with him. Hey, uh, before we get Penn Jillette in here, we got a teacher that's uh, losing his job. This uh, caught our interest because of one fine word in this story. One word? One word, yes. Okay. Well, it only took 30 seconds, but a substitute teacher in Pasco County says it may have cost him his career. So what's the charge from the school district? Wizardry. It's Wait a minute. What? <laughs> Is the teacher ripping off Jim Norton? I think so. I want to hear why was he charged? Why was this man charged with wizardry? <laughs> what did he do? <laughs> well, he's a, he's a sorcerer. <laughs> wizardry. It's a 30 second magic trick. Watch, 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 watch. Go. Where a toothpick okay. disappears. Okay, that's a clip I need. <laughs> <laughs> I just need to have that. Watch, watch, watch. Go. Oh. That's any creep that's on the phone. <laughs> yeah. Wow, is that a creepy guy? Yeah, and that was that that really weird audio was him actually showing the news people his his, his great oh, trick, his wizardry. Uh, oh, is that the one where he's standing behind the kid and then he goes just with his thumbs? Ta da! <laughs> <laughs> what is the trick? The trick for that one. Where, where, get the where he he holds a toothpick, yeah, uh, with like his forefinger like covering his thumb, and the toothpick I guess would be like wedged in between his forefinger and thumb, kind of like if you made a fist with it and you kind of tuck your thumb in, so that way the toothpick will stick to your thumb because you have it pressed in there so hard, yeah. and then you go like that. And open your hand up, and because the toothpick is stuck to the back of your it thumb, looks like it disappears. To anybody looking forward, it looks like it's gone. And then you go like that, and it comes back again. I got a great trick with two toothpicks. I need two toothpicks for it. What is it? A real one? Y yeah, you'll be amazed. Hey, if you get, I can make a tooth toothpick just jump. Really? Jump on another toothpick. You give me a wine cork, I'll I'll, I'll do a little trick. Yeah, on everyone knows a little magic. Yeah. You know, you know, I did the toothpick thing one time at a party where mm. I, I I've kept all the little the uh, meat in the deli sandwich from tipping over. Let me tell you something. <laughs> toothpick <laughs> tr tricks. Wow. <laughs> so do toothpick trick jokes. Yes. <laughs> Granted, that's not that's not necessarily a winner. <laughs> I didn't quite anticipate it being the dud that it was. I liked how you tried to. Pawn it off on the trick itself. Oh well, yeah, yeah. Like it wasn't. The trick has a lack of talent. No. <laughs> <laughs> Why did he get fired for this dumb toothpick trick? We're gonna find out now. Yeah. All right.
Swat, 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 go. Where a toothpick <laughs> disappears, <laughs> then reappears. But after performing it in front of a classroom at Rushy Middle School, substitute oh. teacher Jim Piculus says his job did a disappearing act of its own. <laughs> See, because he. Oof. Were they regular kids? <laughs> They weren't like, you know, like retarded kids or anything, were they? No, nah, no, nah, they were regular. Just regular that kids. That could be understandable. Three of them, three of them jumped out the window. I got a call. <laughs> <laughs> Toothpick. <laughs> <laughs> Came in, one was eating his own shoe. They're like, you can't do magic for these kids. They don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> a disappearing act of its own. I got a call in the middle of the day from the head of the supervisor of uh, substitute teachers. And Jim, we have a huge issue. You can't take any more assignments. You need to come in right away. When Piculus went in, he learned his little magic trick cast a spell that went much farther than he'd hoped. Uh. I said, well, Pat, can you explain to me what this is? Can you say anything at all? You've been accused of wizardry. <laughs> Oh, wizardry. 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 Charged with wizardry. Got accused of wizardry? What the hell's going on? By who? I don't know what's going on with this story. <laughs> By who? Oh, yeah. we'll find out. And how dumb are we? We're doing a story on this. We have a, a, one of the most famous magicians in the world. <laughs> is he here yet? He's not here oh, yet. Oh, is he not here yet? I don't think I don't so. Know. Oh, I thought he was in the sure. green room. Oh, no, okay. no, no. I spoke with the assistant superintendent of the Pasco County School District, who said it wasn't just the wizardry and that Piculus <laughs> had other performance issues, including not following lesson plans. ED. And allowing <laughs> <laughs> That's what the toothpicks were for. He taped two of them around it. <laughs> like a splint. <laughs> Show the children. Ta da. Oh, Salvage is a toothpick moment. <laughs> I like turtles. Yeah, I know. The little know, kid loves them including not following lesson plans and allowing students to play on unapproved computers. Accusations oh. Piculus says he knew nothing about. I'm Piculus. Uh, I think it was embellished after the fact to try to cover what initially what they were saying to me. After the magic trick, Rushy's principal requested Piculus be dismissed. Now the incident may have bewitched his ability to do <laughs> a job anywhere. Right, we get, the, we get it. It's a magic story. Get the whole yes, magic understand. thing. Every word has to be some kind of tie-in. <laughs> He's got kind of like a Harry Potter name, too, there. Pic Pic I am Piculus. Piculus. I'm Piculus from Hogwarts. <laughs> That is a lame-ass name. It sounds like she should be fighting in the Coliseum. Yes, Piculus! Send out Piculus! He doesn't have a sword. He just has like one of the little toothpicks. <laughs> he gets his head chopped off immediately. immediately. And everyone laughs. He attempts to poke his opponent in the eye. <laughs> he has a giant metal hat on. <laughs> metal hat! He tries jousting with a toothpick. <laughs> Piculus it goes 0-1. Oh there goes Piculus. <laughs> Decapitated. Look at Piculus's head! Being <laughs> I still have no idea what my uh, discipline uh, involves because I have never received anything from the school district actually saying uh, what entails. Stephen Leaving Wright. him to wish he knew a little more <laughs> abracadabra. Oh, all right. Because it's a magic story. Every word. <laughs> Piculus has pulled out his toothpick. He is trying to uh, hit his opponent with it. Piculus is down. <laughs> yeah, that's how fast it'll be over. Like the big talked about magic. <laughs> yeah. Piculus has a, a secret weapon, and it's that. Everybody's like, oh, Piculus sucks. <laughs> <laughs> he holds it between his thumb and pointer finger. And Glad he just got a huge mace. He's spinning around. <laughs> 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 he doesn't even kill Piculus right away, though. He just he bludgeons every limb separately. <laughs> oh, good Lord. <laughs> oh, dear Lord, indeed. Yeah. What Stupid Piculus. <laughs> Let's get back to Piculus. Fish, he knew a little more abracadabra, oh. <laughs> at least enough to get his job back. Basically, I'm limbo. I'm in limbo right now. In Pasco County, Janie Porter, Tampa Bay's 10 News. Now, the Pasco County School District also says, as a substitute teacher, Piculus was considered an at-will employee. That means the district does not need to have cause for not bringing him back at all. Um, so 
Why did the magic trick get him fired? Yeah, I, I still don't understand the story. Charged it, with it wizardry? Me, it, it it's 2008. Of, yeah. It almost sounds like he had performance problems in the past that were undocumented, mm. and they were trying to figure out a way to get rid of this guy, and uh. so they tried to use this as an excuse to get rid of him for past performance problems. But what is this? Just it's a magic wizardry. trick? Wizardry. Charged in the 1700s. He was also seen consorting with a Negro. <laughs> We'd like him out. <laughs> Idiots. <laughs> <laughs> a giant mound of toothpicks in Tesla's backyard. <laughs> That's a prestige joke. <laughs> if you watch the prestige, yeah. you'll get it. If not, go screw. <laughs> well, uh, we could do one more before we get uh, Pendulette in here. The news didn't do enough puns. I would yeah. prefer a few yeah. more. <laughs> yeah, just a couple more, right, Jimmy? Oh, they were really... Yeah, we're cadaver. All right. Body floats in New Jersey Canal, gnawed by turtles for nearly 24 hours after police got the call. Gnawed by what? Turtles. By what? Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> uh, like no one knows what's coming. Uh, Hold on to your hats. What did you say, Anthony? Nod by what? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what was the guy... Hang me out to dry you, Henry. What was the guy no, saying No, you're supposed to be... Him? What? What was the guy saying as they bit Oh, him? thank you, Jimmy. I like turtles. Yeah, yeah of see. course. <laughs> Residents are upset that Trenton police did not find a body floating in a canal for nearly 24 hours after the first report. Police said they received the call about the body floating in the Delaware uh, Canal on Saturday, but police say uh, the call was not specific about where the body was, and an initial search did not turn it up. After a second call, searchers found the male body floating in the water on Sunday. Neighbors said a dog and turtles were gnawing <laughs> on it. Oh, God. Do you ever expect that's how you're going to just... No. Be yeah. there when you're dead, being gnawed by turtles. You're invincible when you're a teenager. Yeah. yeah. And nothing will stop me. <laughs> and it ends with a bunch of nips. Nip, 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 nip. They, did this yeah. nipping at you. Yeah, yeah, because they just nip at you. Nip. They can't really take huge, great white shark bites no, just, out of you. Just nipping away. Yeah, I'll never put on a life jacket again. <laughs> turtles come cr cruising. <laughs> <laughs> turtles come cruising. They nip you. <laughs> Saw a turtle swim up to my friend. Eyes didn't roll back. They just stare blankly at you because they're turtles. And then that little beak-like thing come chomping. Put a hole in him about the size of a thimble. <laughs> he went, ow. Over and over again. He yes, went, over and over. Ow, ow. ow. ow, ow, ow hey, ow, turtle, ow. get away. Ow, then he ow, picked ow. it up and threw it because it's a turtle. Let's drink to your shell. Let's drink to my shell. <laughs> See this scar snapper turtle. No, I really can't see it. Where? Yes, well, it healed very well. Oh, okay. <laughs> USS Indianapolis, a thousand of us went over, and a thousand of us had turtle soup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 1,500 went into the water, 1,500 came out. <laughs> we needed Bactine and a couple of Band-Aids when turtles come cruising. <laughs> uh, stupid turtles. <laughs> turtles just come p pounding at you. And you just shoo them away and they go away. <laughs> Ship came, picked us up. <laughs> Mates laughed at us for being turtle bit. <laughs> I like turtles. Go into the turtle cage. <laughs> turtles in the water. Our turtle. Farewell and adieu to you, stupid turtle. <laughs> Shouldn't we, uh, I don't know, close the beaches? I don't know. There's turtles in the water. Yeah, there's turtles in those waters. <laughs> right. Yo, those beaches will stay open. It's the 4th of July. July. That's my favorite. <laughs> July. The uh, there was a turtle scene offshore that did cause somebody a little b b nippy bite. <laughs> yes. But those beaches will stay open. What happened to the Kittner boy? I, uh, huh? The Kittner boy? I don't know. Uh, uh, the Kittner boy's fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not going to bust that shell open and watch that little Kittner boy's pinky <laughs> spill out all over the dock. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. See, because it's just like a shark. But it's little and it's a turtle and it really doesn't hurt. <laughs> a little bit of that exaggerated humor. We sure like it is. We're comparing a turtle with a great white shark. I like turtles. Yeah, yes. we know. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um, one more animal story? We're on a roll here. Yeah, I love them. I think this could, a lot of good stories today, but I think this could be the my favorite one of the day. Ooh. My favorite one of the day. Listen to this uh, this guy. The dare to hit a camel, and police say one guy did. Yeah, tonight he's behind bars. He's accused of smacking a camel at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom, then taking off. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Six Flags! Six Flags! More Flags! More Fun! Punch Camel! <laughs> That's a lot of fun right there. How do you... Uh, camels are pretty tall, right? How do you yeah. get up? How do you get up? How do you motivate yourself to get angry enough to swing at its jaw? <laughs> Just a dumb thing. <laughs> Just stands there. Why would you punch a camel? What did the camel do to you? The camel probably didn't even know how to react. He'd never been punched. He yeah, what do you do? Is that affectionate? <laughs> <laughs> He's petting me. <laughs> it's a little hard, but... Yeah, does it hurt a camel to punch him? Uh, I don't think a human could really... Where would you punch a camel? And I, I, that stupid face. You can't really reach up. Look at this. Look at what this oh, thing Oh, my looks God. Like. Camels should it. be punched. Camels are dopey looking. Look at that. Wow, look at... Google camel That's, and Google... And get the side pictures view. And, yeah, get a, weird, a good side view. Weird stuff going on. That's great. It's not the tumor. Mm. It's just a lumpy animal. It spits at you, too. Yeah, they're awful. Yeah. And taking off. Yeah, kind of bizarre, kind of weird, and kind of sad. You know, we've been saying... <laughs> kind of? Kind of. I think the, 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 you could just take kind of out of that statement there. <laughs> but kind, this is the news. Kind of weird, kind kinda. of bizarre, kind of sad. No, it is weird, it is bizarre, and it is sad. Arrested was a 32-year-old Mongo. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Maybe... Yes, of course. Yeah, Blazing you know, we've been saying hit, slap, even uh, punch the uh, little baby camel. Those are words all being used to describe what happened here yesterday baby? at the park. And police say it, of course, scared the little camel, and the suspects didn't even stop from the hitting. They actually tried to get away with it. Vallejo police say this baby camel... Well, if you're going to hit a camel, of course you're not going to stand there and wait to be arrested. Yeah, yeah what, are you going to turn yourself in? It was a baby camel... Yeah. That's... All right. Now I'm but now I'm upset. Yeah, baby animals are adorable. That's terrible. They grow up to look like monsters, but well, how big was it? Bastard. It was a baby camel, so it was probably <laughs> like ten feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait for the cops. I like turtles. Oh my god, we're talking about camels now. Stop it. Vallejo police say this baby camel is the innocent victim of a crime that led to an unusual arrest. For uh, slapping a camel on the rear hind quarters. You heard right. What? For slapping a camel. What? Vallejo police arrested 24-year-old Christopher Allen for hitting this baby camel on Sunday as part of a dare at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. Why was he arrested for that? Because I'm thinking, and I was thinking he would punch them right in the face. You gotta arrest a, ca uh, a guy for punching a camel. But he hit him on the uh, uh, on the ass. <laughs> one flag. Yeah, it goes down to one flag. You hit camels when people ride camels. They kind of hit them on the ass to give them a little whip, a little whipping. You know. I don't think the camel wants to be. A camel. He doesn't want to be hit in the ass. I thought he punched him in the face. Who, uh, Iraq is Look at that one? little baby camel. We're looking at a lot of uh, images of camels right now, and Iraq has the observation that camels look like uh, the monster from Cloverfield. <laughs> it's pretty, it's <laughs> yeah, those good. legs are a little odd. <laughs> Cloverfield <laughs> monster. <laughs> I love their feet, camels. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Especially their knuckles and toes. <laughs> Under bikinis. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say hi to Nate in Maryland. Nate. Yeah, what's going on, Owen? Hey, 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 Anthony, you're worried about a baby camel, but you laugh when an old lady gets punched? The camel wasn't wearing a hat. <laughs> he didn't deserve to be pummeled. Right. The camel was minding its manners. <laughs> yes. Not like that old bitty with her stupid hat on, her stupid Mary Tyler Moore hat. She's 101. Well, now she knows better. She it took her that long to learn to take your hat off. At the hat removal contest? <laughs> she didn't deserve to get punched by that black man in the vestibule. And I'm so glad she did. <laughs> oh, God. All right, guys, check it out. All right, sorry. Hey, uh, let's go to Jersey. John, you're on the Opie and Anthony show. What's up? Hey, John. Linger longer. Hey. Hey. I'm thinking the guy wouldn't, uh, the camel wouldn't stop offering the guy's cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a camel Jojo. Uh, you should call Z100 with that. They would love that one. Thank you, John. Uh, second half of the story here. Police say the guy entered an area off limits to visitors, and park officials mm -hmm. say he most likely jumped the fence and then slapped the camel. Police say he and his friends were then detained by park security for a short while. 
They then decided to just take off and run away from the park. They got into a car and then led police on a very short chase before finally being taken into custody. Vets checked out the baby camel, and while he was scared, the car was not hurt and should be fine. Meanwhile, police arrested Alan of Santa Rosa and the driver of the car, 22-year-old Chrissy Thatcher, who is from the Bay Area. Both of them have had run-ins with the law before and now face animal cruelty charges. He could possibly uh, get jail time, yes. Oh. So Alan, oh. the guy who's accused of hitting that baby camel, is still in the Solano County Jail tonight because police say he was in violation of parole. He's scheduled to be arraigned tomorrow. Back to you. Incredible. What, did he have to stay a certain amount of feet away? Did he rape a camel? And <laughs> yeah, you know, people have had sex with animals and they don't get into that much trouble. Yeah. I don't think a little swat on the uh, ass of a camel is uh, that big a deal. Yes. What do you have this Girl Scouts? Yeah. What do we? I don't know. Uh, Stump Rain, I'm going to need you on this one. What? Yeah. What is this about? This is from West Palm again, uh, just like the punching DJ was yesterday. This uh, little girl was set up outside a supermarket selling Girl Scout cookies, and these two uh, idiots decided to take the money. How and old the, was she? The the little girl. She was like nine or ten. And they were seventeen. Okay. And they, uh, the news crews came out after they were caught, and the girls were not repentant at all about what they did. And it's pretty amazing how they were on TV admitting what they did. Okay. With that, here it is. I'm going to get... We need some money. That's Jimmy. No, no, no. no get. Okay. We need some money. We saw a girl selling Girl Scout cookies. We saw an envelope with money in it, and I grabbed it, and she drove away. We aren't showing their faces, but these two teens had no problem bragging about their crime to our cameras. Money's money. I mean, I feel bad. It was a nine-year-old girl, but there was $150 in that envelope, and I wanted that money, and it was mine. But after admitting to stealing Gracie Smith's cookie money in front of this wet Grace. Little Gracie Smith. Oh, oh Gracie. Little, little Gracie Smith just trying to sell some cookies. Yeah, devil's advocate. First of all, is little Gracie Smith paying taxes on that money? Does little Gracie Smith have a permit? <laughs> oh, we got Jimmy Justice right here in the studio. That's right. Little Gracie Smith has been running roughshod through that area for years selling her stolen cookies. Selling her wares. Little Gracie Smith is a crook. <laughs> you, don't, you don't like the little mint chocolate chip cookies? I that despise little them. Little Gracie Smith was specifically told to have a calorie count, and she doesn't have it. Little Gracie Smith is a crook and a fat seller. I want some s'mores. Yes, get me some s'mores, Gracie, or I'll report you. Better business girl. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, tired of her skating through life. Is little Gracie selling us trans fats? She certainly is. Little Gracie Smith is a junk peddler. <laughs> <laughs> I love. Oh, I Sean love is, what, what? Dude, Sean's doing an interview. Uh, Sean William Scott is on Channel Eleven, and he'll be on our show right after the interview. That's how it works. I was with Jill interviewing works. him. They were flirting and laughing. Hey, shut up! You have to sit there and take it. <laughs> the opium <Olympian> cuckold show. <laughs> <laughs> cuckold. <laughs> Uh, They're calling you Jimmy Jackass instead of Jimmy Justice. Hey, Jimmy call me, Jackass. Call me what you want, but you know what? I'm not a tax cheat like little Grace <laughs> Smith. I like saying, call me whatever you want. Just don't call me late for dinner. The best. That's the best <laughs> joke ever. Because the, the horrible, call me late for supper. Supper. How terrible he's said. <laughs> even. You know, I think the Girl Scout uh, cookie selling thing is a racket. Like uh, pretty much uh, on the, in the same way the. Uh, 25 year old guys that are selling the candy so they could go to oh, yeah. uh, uh, basketball camp. Oh, that's scam. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, basketball camp? You get a court right outside with your apartment. <laughs> What's camp? <laughs> you tents? Stop it. What is it really? Camp? Well, so they could go to the big tournament in Florida or something? Yeah, I always ask to see their school library card, and I'll buy the whole box. Do you really? Yeah, and then they chase me down the block. <laughs> of course, yeah, of they, course do. they do. Of course they do. All right, let's go back to Lil, Lil Gracie and what happened to See your her. library card. <laughs> That's really oh, funny, though. That man. is a good one. Good way to get shanked. <laughs> That's kind of what Mark Parento asks. <laughs> right, guys. Yeah, right, linger longer. Hey. Right. Mm. Maybe Jimmy Justice could do a little something on the guy selling the, the, the illegal candy. Mm. But after admitting to stealing Gracie Smith's cookie money in front of this West Hypoluxo Winn Dixie, the two Park Vista students are flaunting their freedom. Planning on buying like a necklace and all this stuff and a new phone. 
but now I guess not. Now, the only thing these teens are buying is time. The uh. time is a misdemeanor, petty theft, and a deputy did not... Wow, that should be hours of jail time. Yeah, who are they whoa, screwed? Oh, you know, the reporter right on top of it. Yeah. Meanwhile, is she talking about Gracie Smith and how she was standing there unauthorized <laughs> selling a product in front of another establishment? You want to get to the, 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 the brass tacks? <laughs> hate this kid. I guess not. Now, the only thing these teens are buying is time. Oof. The crime is a misdemeanor. Oh, Petty boy. Theft. Oh, Gracie yeah. on the RICO he Act. Not it, so authorities <laughs> have to wait for the state attorney to file charges. Why did you do it? Um... I mean, who doesn't, like, who doesn't like money? I know it's a crime, but it was an easy crime. She's <laughs> stealing from a nine-year-old. I got to give it to her. It is pretty easy to steal from a nine-year-old. Yeah, yeah, if you're gonna if you're gonna like uh, do some of that crime stuff, yeah, yeah. yeah nine-year-olds got money like that. You yeah. don't even have to punch them, and if you had to, they're down in like one punch. Yeah, you're not gonna steal from the drug dealer uptown. That, that's no. a little too scary. That's you got to you got to go right with the nine-year-old. Thing. Nine-year-old's yeah. not gonna pull a piece out on you. By you the just way, smack him around. I just saw a headline on this story. That's how the cookie crumbles. That's how the cookie crumbles. I'm John Montone. Now, this next clip, <laughs> this next clip will make a lot of people laugh, and it'll, it'll also piss people off at the same time. That's the beauty of this radio show. Is this, uh, is this, uh, it's labeled, oh, uh, I just wonder if it was is Gracie the Thief. <laughs> <laughs> it's labeled, she's pissed. She should have been able to keep the money since she was charged with the crime. It looks like they already have a confession on tape, but Gracie should not expect an apology. I'm actually pissed because I should have kept that money. They charged me with all the charges I just got. Do you have any remorse about stealing from a nine-year-old girl? Right now, no, because I'm kind of pissed because I have charges and we had to give the money back anyway, so now I'm pretty pissed. Like, I don't feel sadness for that little girl. I mean, she's getting a lot of money right now from people who feel bad for her, so whatever. Oh God! I, I these little I, bitches. I just wish these two girls take up uh, biking in Mexico. Whoa! Are these are these them right there, right, Iraq? Oh yeah, white trash. Is that it? Let me let me take a look at her. Sexy. You got a bit of the white trash going on. What the Iraq? They blurred the face. I could kind of see it though. Yeah, you just squint and here. You, can you see squint. through the blur. That's all you squint have. When to they do. pixelate something, you see. Look, it. I got the face. All you have to do is I, squint. I totally see her face from here. Oh, that's, oh my God! If you well, that's a, they're doing a minimal pixelation on purpose. Yeah, but yeah. if you squint, the, the pixelation goes away. I didn't know that. Oh yeah. Oh wow. yeah. Man. Oh yeah. That's why. Well, certain to parts do. of the world, there is no pixelation. I get it. <laughs> 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 What's the update there, Stunny? Uh, the update is one of the girls was set free, and the other one faces up to three years in juvie. But uh -huh. just this week, uh -huh. the same girl was caught running out of a Denny's on a twenty-eight dollar bill. She has not have money. Oh, and I would have good with her. These chicks just... Oh. I'm filling up looking at her. You like that? Oh, please. If she'll, she'll do that for $28. That yeah. girl is another one? Yeah. The blonde right there? That's, that's the one who ran. Oh, she looks like, like somebody. Crap. Who does she look like? Paris Hilton. Guess what she'd do yeah, for 150 If she'd run out on the bill, she'd steal from a nine-year-old. Mm -hmm. Here's 200 oh, I oh. bet you give her 200 you're in. That's right. How old are they? 17. Oh, 17. 17? All right, well. It's legal. Some states. Some states. I don't, I don't go there. Well, let's get the chart. We do have the How chart. How low can you go?